Okay. okay. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. I hope you're all well. First of all, thank you for Ummah Connected for hosting us. We appreciate it. Barakallah fikum. So I'm just going to give a brief introduction to myself and to the Self Love Club. My name is Amina. I am a nutritionist. I studied in the UK from nursery school all the way to university. After university, I worked briefly in public health and then I got tired of living in the UK and I decided to make the big leap to move back to Uganda in 2018. I've been in Uganda for three years now. What? Three years. Um, it's been an interesting journey with highs and lows, but I have no regrets. I love living in Uganda. Uh, I've been working as a nutritionist. I have a company called The Health Academy where we teach health and well-being lessons to different groups in schools, in corporate institutions, which go around Uganda teaching about health and wellness. And I'm very passionate about this subject. Now, 2020 was a very difficult year for every single person that I know. And in the beginning of 2021, I wanted to do something to try and help people take care of themselves more because one thing we learned from 2020 is that our health is the most valuable things we have in our lives and if we don't take care of it we are the only person responsible for our own health so we need to take care of it and when i say health i mean the world health organization definition of health so they say that health is not just the absence of disease and infirmity it is the complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being. So it's your body, your mind, and your social environment. So whenever I say health, I'm not just talking about our, my body, our bodies. I'm talking about our physical, emotional, mental health, as well as our social health, which includes your relationships, your family, your finances. All of these things are part of your health. So in 2021, I started, we, the four of us, started this initiative called the Self Love Club Uganda, trying to promote self help and well being in the Ugandan community because self help and well being is not people, is not something that Ugandans take very seriously. They put a lot of money and a lot of time into other things, but they don't take care of themselves. They're only now slowly starting to realize it. And I think that's one of the good things that came from COVID is that people realize that they need to take care of themselves. So me, myself, Amina, who's a nutritionist, Jamila, who is a fitness coach, we are going to be focusing on the physical aspects of health. Um, Sharifa, who is a marriage counselor and a life coach, she'll be focusing on the emotional aspects of health. And Mariam, who is a business coach, she'll be focusing on the social aspects of health. So the four of us together tackle health in all of the aspects of health. And this is our first event that we're doing together, but hopefully we'll do many, many more. And we decided to launch it in February because February is usually the month where there's Valentine's and everybody is focused on showing love to others. And we wanted to refocus the love and show people to love themselves. So that is the Self Love Club Uganda. It has just started, it's just launching. This is our first event, and we are so happy to be doing our first event with Uma Connected because we believe that in U Ugandans need these services, but especially the Muslim community. Muslim Ugandans do not take such things very seriously. You go to the gym, it's very rare you'll find another Muslim in the gym. We don't know, we don't value taking care of ourselves. So hopefully we can work with Uma Connected to try and increase not only our imans, but also our physical health. So today I'm going to be talking about the emotions of eating. Now, the emotions of eating are very, very important because your relationship with food is the foundation for your diet. You cannot have a healthy diet unless you have a healthy relationship with food. And many of us have an unhealthy relationship with food and we don't even realize it. So before I can give you any advice of eat this and do this and do this, 
you will not take any of my advice unless you have a healthy relationship with food, unless you understand your relationship with food. So this, the aim of this presentation is to help you understand emotional eating, to identify your triggers and find more satisfying ways to feed your feelings and to help you understand what foods affect the brain. So first of all, what is emotional eating? Emotional eating is using food to make yourself feel better, to fill emotional needs rather than physical needs. Many of us are emotional eaters. And before I studied these things, I didn't realize I was an emotional eater. And when I learned it, I was like, oh my God, you guys, I'm an emotional eater. So there are some signs that you are an emotional eater, okay? If you answer yes to any of these questions, then that is a sign that you are an emotional eater. So I'm going to ask you eight questions and you answer in your head, okay? So number one is, do you eat more when you are feeling stressed? Number two is, do you eat even when you're not hungry? Number three is, do you eat to make yourself feel better? Like to calm yourself down when you're stressed or to make yourself happy when you're sad? Do you eat to make yourself feel better? Number four is, do you reward yourself with food? Number five is, do you regularly eat until you are stuffed? Not full, because full is normal, but stuffed is like when you are so, your, your stomach is so full, you can't breathe. Do you eat until you are uncomfortably full? Does food make you feel safe? Do you feel like food is a friend? And number eight is, do you feel powerless or out of control about what you eat? If you answer yes to any of these questions, that is a sign that you are an emotional eater, okay? Now, emotional eating is a cycle that never ends. The start of the cycle is something happens in your life to trigger your emotions. Either you have stress or you just had an argument or you're, you have a deadline. Something goes on in your life that triggers your emotions. The next step is you feel an overwhelming urge to eat. And when I say an overwhelming urge to eat, I mean like you feel like you immediately need to eat something. Then following that emotional urge, the, the overwhelming urge, you then eat more than you know that you should. When you are eating emotionally, you eat so much, you don't even realize what you're eating and you end up eating more than you should. And then you feel bad about yourself. You feel guilty and even feel ashamed. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe I just ate this whole Domino's medium pizza to myself. And then you feel bad. And then that triggers your emotions again. And then you get an overwhelming urge to eat. And then you eat more than you should. And then you feel bad and it goes round and round and round and round. The cycle never ends. So we need to try and break this cycle. And the first step to breaking the cycle of emotional eating is to understand the difference between physical hunger and emotional hunger. So physical hunger it is more straightforward to understand. It's very easy to understand. Physical, physical hunger starts gradually. When you're physically hungry, you don't just immediately become hungry. Your hunger starts slowly, slowly, and it increases gradually. When you're physically hungry, any food sounds good. Like, you know, when you've been fasting, like in the, in you, in the UK, when you fast for long hours, when you're fasting, even a plate of broccoli sounds good. When you're physically hungry, any, any food sounds good to you because you're physically hungry. When you are eating from physical hunger, you're usually aware of what you're eating and how much you're eating. When you're eating from physical hunger, you usually stop when the hunger, the feeling of hunger goes away. When physical hunger is located in your stomach, you'll physically feel the hunger in your stomach. You'll feel pains, you'll feel, you'll feel your, stomach, your stomach rumbling. Physical hunger has a physical effect on your body, in your stomach and also in your energy. Your energy will feel low, you will feel tired. When you are physically hungry, you will see the physical effects in your body. And when you eat from physical hunger, you usually don't feel ashamed or guilty because you usually eat in a reasonable amount of food. Now, emotional hunger is more complicated. Emotional hunger 
like I said, physical hunger starts gradually. Emotional hunger comes suddenly. It comes like a wave of hunger. Something happens in your life and then there's like a tsunami of hunger that takes over you and it becomes overwhelming and urgent. Like you must, 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 must eat. When you are emotionally hungry, you usually crave specific foods. When you're physically hungry, any food will satisfy you. But when you are emotionally hungry, only a burger will, will satisfy you, or only a uh, cake will satisfy you. When you are emotionally hungry, you usually crave a specific type of food. When you are eating from emotional hunger, you often eat mindlessly. You eat, eat, eat without realizing how much you're eating or even what you're eating. When you're eating from physical hunger, you usually go past being full. So you're, you're no, you go past being full and you enter that stage, you stop when you are uncomfortable. You don't stop when you're full, you stop when you become uncomfortable. Physical, emotional hunger is not located in the stomach. Emotional hunger will have no effect on your body, your stomach, or you will not feel tired. Emotional hunger will be all in your brain. If you, when you're hungry emotionally, your stomach will not show you any signs. Your body will not show you signs. All of the hunger will be coming from your brain. You will only be thinking about food. There'll be actually no physical signs of hunger. And when you're thinking about food, it will be very specific, a particular food, a particular smell, a particular texture. Um, emotional hunger is 100% in the brain. And when you eat from emotional hunger, you usually feel regret or shame or guilt. You don't feel good about yourself once you've eaten from emotional hunger because you've usually eaten something that's unhealthy and you've usually eaten something that is a lot of it. So the most common, the most common things that bring on emotional hunger Number one is stress. Most people emotionally eat when they're stressed because it makes them feel better. Like stress can be from work, from, you know, you have a deadline, from moving house, an argument with your spouse. Any type of stress can trigger people to emotional eat. Another cause of emotional eating is stuffing your emotions. Some people, and Sharifa can help you, these such people, they don't like conflict, even when it's, it's needed. I think in life, when you're dealing with other human beings, whether it's work, whether it's family, sometimes conflict is necessary. If somebody's making you do something you don't wanna do, but some people don't like conflict, they are, they are shy or they don't have an, an enough confidence to stand up for themselves. So when there's an issue that requires them to stand up for themselves, rather than speaking up, they keep quiet and then they eat to stuff down those emotions rather than expressing them. That is called stuffing your emotions. Another humongous cause of emotional eating and poor diets in general is boredom. One of my favorite quotes is, the devil makes work for idle hands. When you are idle, being idle, being bored is one of the biggest causes of problems in people's lives, not just physical health, but mental health and social health as well. Being bored is such, a determ is such a detriment to healthy eating. And when I get people who are having weight management problems and they come to me and they are, I ask them, do you have any hobbies? And they look at me funny like, what does hobbies have to do with nutrition? But I tell them most of the time you're eating because you have nothing else to do. The more you have to do, the less you will eat. So I always tell people, come to me. I'm like, okay, we're gonna give you this nutrition plan and we're also gonna find some hobbies for you to do. Being bored is one of the biggest causes of poor eating. Another one is childhood habits. I myself growing up and many people on who are listening and even the way we raise our kids now, we give, you, we give children treats when they've done good things. For example, you say, if you do this chore, I'm gonna give you a sweetie. Or if you do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a chocolate. Or when it's your birthday, we have a cake. As a child, Treats, junk food is often used as treats. And what this does to us, it makes us subconsciously condition our brains to understand that junk food equals happiness. It's, it sounds like really far-fetched, but when you're a child and whenever you do something good and you're feeling happy and then you are rewarded with junk food, when you become an adult and you have adult problems and adult stress, 
your brain will tell you, if you want to be happy, Amina, go and eat some cake. So it's those childhood habits that we have we were raised with that end up coming into our adult life. So I'm like, okay, if I'm if I'm sad, I know that I'll have a Snickers and it will make me happy because when I was younger, whenever I was in a good, my mother was in a good mood, she would give me a Snickers. It's, I don't know if I don't know if I'm explaining that properly, but the way that you were raised as a child can affect the way that you your relationship with food as an adult. So it's important as adults we have to try and understand, try and look back in our childhoods and see if those patterns existed. And as adults raising children, we have to try and prevent doing that as well, because you see as an easy thing, like I know if I have a sweet, I can bribe these kids to be to behave well with this sweet. But as an adult, that child is gonna grow up to identify that sweets make them happy. So childhood habits are also very important. And also social influences also affect your eating because sometimes people eat when they're not hungry just because they're at they're at a function if you're at a wedding and everybody's eating and you've already eaten sometimes you'll just eat just because you know or if you're with friends you're out like if you say if you're trying to control your your diet but then you you end up going out with your friends and they're eating something that you shouldn't do that you shouldn't be eating so social influences also affect your eating and it doesn't and when it comes to social influences it doesn't always have to be a sad thing it can even be a happy thing like it could be like a, somebody randomly calls you for an akika and there's a, like they killed a whole cow and then you go and you eat a whole sania of meat and you come home stuffed that's also emotional eating a form of emotional eating you're eating just for social sakes which is not healthy as well you should never eat just for fun you should be eating to fuel your body if your body is full you shouldn't be filling it past that okay so how do you cope with emotional eating the number one thing we have to do is to identify and address the underlying issues you have to identify what causes you to emotional eat is it stress is it anxiety is it boredom if it's depression and loneliness that's causing you to emotional eat, you have to find alternatives. So for depression, an alternative can be to do an activity that will make you feel better. When you are emotionally hungry, you should try and replace eating with experiences. So if I'm emotionally hungry when I'm feeling sad, maybe I should go and do something that makes me happy rather than eating. Like maybe I should go and call a, a friend who makes me laugh. Like we all have those friends who always make you laugh. So when I'm feeling sad, Rather than eating, let me call my friend who makes me laugh or let me watch this TV program that makes me happy. Like, let me watch Keeping Up Appearances. Let me watch an episode of that. When you are feeling, find an alternative experience rather than eating. If you're feeling anxious, like for example, if you are a student who's waiting for results, like say it's results day and you're stressed about results and you're so stressed, you're like, okay, let me just go and eat a bucket of KFC. No, no. Anxiety, the physical solution for anxiety is to move your body. So anxiety is resolved with exercise. You're feeling anxious, go for a walk, do some exercise, you know, squeeze a stress ball. Anxiety requires physical activity. If you're feeling exhausted, like if you're like, I'm so overwhelmed, I've got so much on my plate, and that feeling of overwhelmness makes you feel like, oh, let me just have a slice of cheesecake because I'm so overwhelmed. Rather than having a slice of cheesecake, do something to treat yourself, like have a bubble bath or go for a spa day or do something to comfort, to, to calm you down rather than eating, have another experience. If you're bored, like I said, you need to find hobbies. If, you, if boredom is causing you to overeat, especially in lockdown a lot of people are eating out of boredom but in lockdown there are so many things that you can do online that you can even enroll for a free online class right now there's so many online classes do find something to take up your time if boredom is what's causing you to eat so emotional eating in summary emotional eating you should replace eating with experiences Okay, so we have to try and train our brains to practice mindful eating. The difference between mindful eating and unmindful eating is very uh, easy, okay? So unmindful eating, when you're not thinking about what you're eating or just eating, this is when you're eating past the feeling of feeling full. 
you're full up, but you're continuing to eat and you're ignoring your body's signals. Because when you are physically full, when your stomach has reached capacity, your body will tell you, I'm full. But when you're unmindfully eating, you will keep eating even past your, when your body has shown you its signals, okay? Unmindful eatings, it means you're eating when your emotions tell you rather than when your stomach tells you. The only thing that you should answer to when it comes to food is your stomach. That is the only thing that should tell you it's time to eat. But when you're eat emotionally eating, your emotions are telling you what to eat. I'm stressed, let me eat. I'm sad, let me eat. I'm bored, let me eat. Unmindful eating comes from emotions. Unmindful eating, people who, meet, who eat unmindfully usually eat alone and they eat in random places at random times. Like you eat in your bedroom at 2 a.m. in the morning or you eat in the car park, in the car at you know, some random times. Eating alone and eating in a random place is also not good. It encourages unmindful emotional eating, okay? And another thing of unmindful eating is eating foods that have very little nutritional value. When you're not thinking about what you're eating, you'll just eat anything. And also eating while multitasking is very important to, when somebody is unmindfully eating, they're eating while Zooming, while, while feeding the baby, while texting their sister. You're, when you're doing many, many things, you're not gonna focus on what you're eating. You're gonna end up eating much more than you should. So on the flip side, mindful eating, is when you listen to your body when it tells you that you are full. You eat, and the best way to do that is to eat slowly. If you're eating very fast, you will not have the time for the signals to go from your stomach to your brain to tell you I'm full. But when you're eating slowly, that gives your brain enough time to get the signals from the stomach and say, okay, I'm full now, I'm full. So eating slowly and listening to your body when it tells you that it's full. A mindful eater, listens to their stomach. The stomach is the only thing that tells you when it's time to eat. A mindful eater eats with other people and they eat at set times in set places. At, we have breakfast at this time with my family, then we have lunch at this time, and then we have dinner at this time. If you are a mindful eater, a healthy eater, your, your meals are on a schedule. Like I know at breakfast time is at this time, at this time, at that time. If your meals do not have a schedule, you eat whatever, however, wherever, that is a sign that you are un eating unhealthily. So part of healthy eating is eating in a routine and also not eating by yourself. Because when you are eating by yourself, that is when you're most likely to overeat because there's nobody checking on you. If you're eating with other people and they'd be like, is that your fourth slice of pizza? They can help you keep aware of what you're eating. And also an, a mindful eater eats foods that are healthy. They are aware that the food they eat helps their body, nourishes their body. So they try to consume healthy foods. And a mindful eater, a healthy eater, they, they only eat when they're eating. They don't multitask because multitasking prevents you from eating healthy. So if you're eating healthy, you're eating at a scheduled time, you're not multitasking, you're eating healthy food, and you're listening to your body when it tells you that it's full up. Now, that's the basics of emotional eating. Now, quickly, I just want to talk about the foods that affect your brain. This subject is very, very expansive. We can go into it. It's really a, a lot, especially for different life stages, for children, for adolescents, for adults and for elderly people. It's broken down. So I'm just going to give you the basics for an adult, the foods that help your brain, because our emotions affects the way that we eat, but also the things that we eat affect our emotions at the same time. Because if you are eating unhealthy food like sugar, like high fat foods, like processed foods, these have a negative effect on the brain. And the brain controls your emotions, your hormones, your brain functioning, your cognitive functioning. So it's important to try and eat foods that promote a healthy brain. So one of the things is high fiber foods. So these are whole grains and vegetables, complex carbohydrates. The reason why high fiber foods are important for the brain and for emotions is because 70% of the feel good hormones, serotonin, oxytocin, these are the hormones that make us happy and they help to relieve stress. 
70% of those hormones are created in the digestive system. So if you have digestive problems, if you have constipation, if you have diarrhea, this will mess with your hormones, your happy hormones, and this can make you feel more stressed and more anxiety. So in order for us to have good balance of hormones in our bodies, we have to make sure that we are eating a high fiber diet to promote our digestive health, because that will help our hormones be balanced and our emotions to be balanced, okay? Another one is complex carbohydrates. And complex carbohydrates are all vegetables. Every vegetable is a complex carb. And complex carbohydrates are also high in fiber, but also complex carbohydrates, when they're broken down in the body, they release an amino acid called tryptophan. And tryptophan stimulates the release of serotonin in the body. And serotonin is the hormone that makes us feel happy. So vegetables are a natural antidepressant. If you are feeling depressed, you're feeling sad, eating vegetables can help lift your mood rather than taking tablets. It, it takes longer than a tablet to work, but it has, but it's better for you because it has no medical side effects and it helps your body in other ways. But complex carbohydrates, all vegetables are a natural antidepressant. Vitamin D is very important because vitamin D helps neurofunctioning as well as vitamin B and selenium. These are the three biggest nutrients that help with the neurons, the neurosystem in the brain, that help the signals in the brain work properly. So vitamin D, the best source is the, is the sun. And most women who dress in hijab are actually vitamin D deficient, even when you live in Uganda, because the whole time you're covered. So if you are a woman who covers yourself, you have to try and spend at least 30 minutes a week in sun, uncovered in the sun between, between sunrise and midday. That is the time where the vitamin D is best absorbed into the skin. So if you're a woman who wears hijab, at least once a week on a Sunday, go into your compound without your hijab, if you can, and try and get some vitamin D. Many women who wear hijab are vitamin D deficient. If you can't do that, if you live somewhere where you cannot take off your hijab in the compound, then take a supplement. Vitamin D supplement is very important for our mental health. Fish oils, omegas, of course, omegas help with the cognitive functioning, and this helps with your mood, with your psychology. Your brain needs, the fuel for your brain is omegas and minerals. So that's why we need fish oils and root vegetables because root vegetables are high in minerals and our brain needs minerals to work. Like I said, this particular subject is very huge. We can break it down into many steps, which we can do in the future, but that is the basics for an adult, the things that they need to consume to have healthy, to have a healthy mental health. So thank you for listening. I don't know if I've gone over my time, but thank you so much for listening. Um, you can find me on all socials, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram as Amina's Healthy Kitchen. And uh, you can leave any questions in the comments. In the comment, you can leave your email because we have a worksheet. This, this presentation, the self-love seminar, we have a worksheet that has worksheets from me and all the other girls, basically with some little information for you to take home on, on the topics that we're discussing today. I'm happy to answer any questions now that you have. And I hope that you, I hope that you enjoyed that. Thanks, Amina. We enjoy. We enjoyed. You are still enjoying you. Um, <laughs> didn't want you to stop. Uh, I love vegetables. That's why I'm happy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Sama, but uh, uh, I think he, um, very nice presentation. People are appreciating. Zahara, do you, you don't love vegetables, so I should start eating vegetables, Zahara. Um, <laughs> Any, uh, I, I saw a hand, uh, we had a hand, was, was it, someone put it down, I think. Um, if anyone has questions, please, uh, you can ask, okay, Fatum. <clears throat> yeah, Fatum, you have the mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now I have a problem of eating vegetables. What do you have anything whereby, or oh, like medicine, or oh, what that thing which can help me so that I can start to eat them? Yeah. 
Well, the thing about medicine, any medicine, all medicine has side effects. There's no medicine that you can take. Even herbal medicine. There's no medicine that you can take that doesn't have a side effect. So it's better for you to try and consume the vegetables and you start, sm start small. It doesn't mean that you have to, tomorrow you have to eat you know, one kilogram of spinach. You start small, making small steps because if you make small consistent steps, it can be better for you. I always say that when it comes to nutrition, your pharmacy is the market. Your pharmacy is nakasero. Your pharmacy is a winner. You should never be having anything in a tablet or any medicine that we need. You just have to find a way to enjoy it. So find recipes that you like. But if I try to eat them, if I say that, let me try to eat them, I feel like I'm eating peppers, just peppers. Well, you can mix them. Like, for example, you can make a smoothie, like you can make a sweet smoothie. When you mix some vegetables with fruits, the fruits overtake the taste of the vegetables. So if you have like a smoothie with spinach and yogurt and pineapple, you won't taste the spinach. So I can, if you, if you go onto Amina's Healthy Kitchen, on Facebook or Instagram, you'll see I have recipes that can show you, or you can contact me um, on Amina's Healthy Kitchen on Facebook, you can contact me for more recipes. But I always say the best thing is natural. I, your pharmacy is the market. Your pharmacy should never be, you should never be getting your nutrients from a tablet or from a, a, a drink or from anything. It should be natural from the farm to your plate. So if yeah, you want more yeah. recipes, I can help you with that. Oh, thank you, sister. Okay. It's, uh... Okay, um, Zulaikha binti Isa, uh, you got the mic. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't have any questions because I've understood each and every time. I just wanted to appreciate Sister Amina and I would really like to get in touch with you. Seriously, this is so nice. May Allah be pleased with you, inshallah. Just wanted to appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. MashaAllah. Amina, are you muted? Amina, you're muted. Amina, you're muted. Thank you very, very much. Barakallah Fikum for the feedback. You can reach out to me on Facebook, on Instagram, Amina's Healthy Kitchen. And you can you can DM me, you can send me a message and we can talk further. But thank you everybody for appreciating in the comments. I appreciate your appreciation. You appreciate their appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh -huh. Abrahman Wajina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Hey, I'm Abdurrahman Mawajji from Kampala, Uganda, Thraya Islam Media. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Madam Amina Babidye, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, Abdurrahman is a fan of uh, coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, from your experience and expertise, I wish to know a little bit of the importance or effects of coffee to us. Mm -hmm. Yes, just to that. Coffee, coffee is like everything. It can be good and bad. It depends on the person. I need to know more about you. For example, somebody who has high blood pressure should try and avoid coffee because coffee increases blood pressure and it increases somebody who has anxiety problems or somebody who is very has a is very emotional should try and avoid coffee because coffee can make you more anxious but if you don't have any health concerns if you don't have any emotional or cardiac health concerns then coffee in moderation can be very good for you because coffee is full of antioxidants as well so if you are a healthy person without any cardiovascular or any emotional problems then coffee can be part of a healthy diet so long as you're choosing a low fat option like black coffee and americana mm -hmm. or a low fat cappuccino if you have those sugary coffee drinks those lattes they're not good for you but low fat coffee can be part of a healthy diet is that it's, does that answer your question yes jazakallah jazakallah khair yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, Amina, uh, yeah. as people bring in their, uh, bring in their questions, yeah. you know, you see fasting, yeah? 
yes. I know eating in the night is not good, yeah? Yes, but yes. If someone doesn't eat during daytime, they're yes. fasting 18 hours, yeah? Yes. Or they're fasting 16 hours, you know that diet, yeah? Yes, yes. You're fasting, you're fasting six, for 16 hours, and then yes. you eat in the night. Is, it, yes. is that a bad thing? Eating in the night is only unhealthy if you're eating unhealthy things. Because if you're going to have, if you're going to have, like, for example, I have some people who are trying to lose weight, but they have a cheat day where they can eat anything they want. If you are going to have something junk, you should try and have it in the middle of the day so you can work it off. You should never be, you should never be eating junk in the middle of the night. But if you're eating at 11 p.m. midnight, but you're eating a healthy meal with a lean protein and full of vegetables, that's not unhealthy. So if I'm eating my matoke and nyama, is that, is that healthy? It depends on the portion size. If you're eating a mountain of matoke and a mountain of nyama with no vegetables, that's not healthy, uncle. But if you're eating a handful, your size handful of matoke with maybe three pieces of meat and then the rest of the plate is full of vegetables, that is fine. Good. <laughs> So uh, uh, what do you, what do you uh, advise um, the best diet should be uh, fasting 16 hours or just eating small portions uh, during the time and then you, uh, you just don't eat um, during the night? What's the, what's the best, the best uh, diet? The best diet is the best diet is fasting diet because the best diet, because I remember there was one person, there was um, there was this old study that I used to have in the UK who told me one time, she said, when I was studying nutrition, and she said, you know, the Prophet peace upon him was a nutritionist. And I was like, really? And she said, yes, there's so much nutritional advice in the Sunnah and the Quran. And one of the advices is to eat three parts of your stomach. You, you separate your stomach into three parts, one for food, one for water, and one for air. So if you're not fasting and you're eating, if you can't fast, because some people can't fast. So if you're eating, you should try and follow that, that advice. Divide your stomach in three parts whenever you're eating. One part for food, one part for water, and one part for air. And if you, if you can fast, then try and fast two, at least two days a week because fasting is very, 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 very good for you. And the more, because fasting has become very popular even among non-Muslims. And there is so much research, scientific research to show how fasting two days a week can really help your body. It promotes, it promotes um, your immune system. It promotes your cognitive function. It promotes your metabolism. It helps you manage your weight. Fasting is extremely important. And if Muslims knew the value of fasting, we'd all be fasting every two, two, at least two days a week. So I, I always recommend fasting two days a week, even to my non-Muslim clients. If you can't fast, then be mindful of what you're eating and separate your stomach in three parts, one for food, one for water, and one for air. When I say one for air, that means that you should never eat until you're so full, you can't breathe, you're like, oh. No, there, there should always be space. Your stomach shouldn't be bulging when you leave that one part for air. Okay. I mean, uh, you see these, uh, the times are hard now. It's COVID, yeah? Yes. And we need to boost our immune system. Yes. Which foods should we eat? The, the easiest way to try and boost your immunity, the simplest way is to try and have five portions of fruits and vegetables a day and five different portions so any fruits and vegetables but they have to be five different portions the reason why it's important to have five different portions is because the more variety that you eat the more nutrients you are getting into your system and it should be a variety if you have two bananas it doesn't count as two portions that's still one portion you need to have a banana um, some green pepper an orange a bowl of strawberries and some spinach. That is five portions. It has to be five different portions. And that's another thing that we say is to try and eat the rainbow. The more colorful, natural colors, the more naturally colorful your diet is, the more nutrients you are getting, the more antioxidants you are getting, the more nutrients you are getting. And the more colorful a food is, the more, the more healthier it is. For example, a purple cabbage is healthier than a white cabbage. 
because when you see that bright color, that is an indication that this food is high in nutrients. So like turmeric, beetroot, carrots, anything that has a strong color is high, is very good for you. So that's the easiest way to remember it. Eat five fruits and vegetables a day and try to have a colorful diet to protect, to boost your immune system. You should be eating the rainbow. Oh, even the purple onions, yeah? Yeah, the red onions better than that. Anything that's vibrant color is good. Okay. Um, any more questions? Um, please, you can raise your hand. Uh, if no more, because if there's no questions, we can. Um, I mean, I can tell us who's next, the next presenter. Okay. Uh, um, if you have any more questions, like I said, you can contact me on Amina's Healthy Kitchen on Facebook and Instagram. Um, thank you for listening to me. And now I'm going to pass it on to Jamila. Good. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum as um, Thank you, Uma Connect, for having us today. And thank you to Amina for your talk earlier. Loved it so much, made so much notes as well. Right, so my name is Jamila Lankrise. I'm a fitness trainer and I, I don't know, I've been in like the whole fitness thing for a while. I'm basically a two-time Olympian in swimming and I've also competed in like other various events. So when I quit swimming a couple of years ago, that's when I got into the whole fitness industry side of things. So like I said earlier, I'm a fitness trainer. I do both mobile personal training services for ladies where I basically go to their homes and we work out from there. And then I also do classes at CrossFit Kampala, which is the only cross, official CrossFit box in Uganda. Um, I also post content on my Instagram page where I basically post home workouts because I also don't want fitness to be limited to certain people because also like gyms are quite expensive and like how people mentioned earlier like for various reasons or even like for religious beliefs like most ladies can't go to the gym itself which is like totally understandable so I want that page to be like someone can go on there and like find workouts to do so the workouts are like very doable, I'd say. And like each video is like different. So they range from like beginner friendly, low impact for people that um, either have like knee issues or other health problems. Um, and then they also range up to more advanced and high intense workouts. Right, so the goal for the session today, well, my talk today is basically just to explore your, how you approach fitness and if you approach it through a more self-loving mindset and view, or if you use fitness to like low-key basically punish your body. But I feel like we do that subconscious, subconscious, I say what, subconsciously without actually thinking about us actually punishing our bodies. Because when you think about it, you wouldn't actually necessarily want to hurt your body, but I feel like sometimes we do without actually realizing. Um, so yeah, that's why my whole approach to fitness is actually focusing more on how you look rather than how you, sorry, how you feel rather than how you look, which I feel like kind of switches things up because I feel like you can have quote unquote like the best body and ever, but it's like, but if you don't feel good in your skin, it also reflects out and then you also still don't feel good about your body. And then like that cycle just rotates and rotates. So that's basically what we're going to be exploring today. Um, yeah. So how to tell if your approach is like negatively affecting your self-love journey in regards to like the whole fitness side of things is a couple of things you can use to actually tell is you approach fitness as a way to burn calories. So let's say for instance, you pick like the most um, difficult workouts. So the ones which are like the most high intense cause you know, you burn the most calories in this one and just limit yourself to those rather than exploring like other forms of movements which you actually enjoy. Um, another way to tell is that you prioritize um, you, like numbers over your own mental well-being. 
So let's say, for example, you prioritize like your weight, your dress size, body measurements, like progress pictures over like how you're actually feeling in your skin. Um, another way to tell is that you're constantly comparing your body to like everyone else's. And I feel like when you fall into this spiral, because I was like in it for so long or wanting to look a certain way, you start to compare and also to like judge other women for how they look. Because I feel like low key, you're like insecure in the way you look. So you put other people down or you like talk negatively of others to like make yourself feel better. But it's like, it doesn't actually help the situation. Um, another way to tell is that you use other people's bodies as like quote unquote body goals, which I feel like many of us do, but I feel like the trend is kind of like dying out now. But I know like a couple of years ago, it was like such a big thing, like the whole fits for um, influences and Instagram and it's like, everyone was like, oh, I want to look, look like so-and-so, like their body goals and stuff. But I feel like by saying that outside or like even thinking it is just, I feel like you're basically saying that your body isn't enough as it is and you have to look like someone else for it to be like good enough rather than appreciating what you actually have and like making the most of it and like making the most of like feeling good just about yourself, you know? So if, you know, you can explore all these different things we've spoken about and if you relate to any of them, like they could be hindering like your self-love journey. Cause I feel like fitness is um, a journey per se. Cause like you literally need your body to be on earth and like to do the things you do. And once we like stop approaching like fitness through a hate perspective or like the changing, cause like that's what I get so much like many times like people come to me they're like oh I want to like you know get rid of my stomach or I want to lose x amount of weight and I'm just like why do you want to lose like they'll be like I want to lose like 20 kilos and like when you think of it 20 kgs is a lot but obviously depending on someone's weight and like how they look it's like it looks different but I feel like when you genuinely ask them like why do you want to lose you know why 20 they're like oh I just want to like feel better in my skin and I'm just like but don't you think like just focusing more on that side of things rather than the numbers is like a more, I think like wholesome approach. And I feel like it just makes enjoying exercise even more enjoyable because you're not focusing on a number. Because I remember at some point when I was just all numbers based and like every week I'd like weigh myself and I'll get so disheartened like when the scale wasn't going down. But you know, I was like working out like two times a day and like counting all my calories and doing like all these things. But I was like, but why are the numbers going down? And I like look back and like to my quote unquote skinny days, like where I was like just so lean and so toned, but I was so unhappy in myself. And it's actually quite sad because like, yeah, I was just like so unhappy in my skin and I'd like find any small thing. I'd be like, okay, no, like this week I need to work on my arms because they're like jiggly or whatever. But it's like, it's crazy when I look now because I'm like, I've changed so much in just like my whole body composition, but I just feel like I just feel way better in my skin. Like when I change the whole mentality of like just leaving the numbers behind and being like, okay, no, I'm just going to focus on like my own mental well-being. It's like, how am I actually feeling in my skin? Like, regardless of the scales or the numbers, because like at the end of the day, like no one actually cares. Like when we do die, no one's going to be talking about like your dress size, like, oh my gosh, she was like a size 12 or she was a size 16, you know I mean? Like literally no one will be speaking about it. But we put so much, so much focus on like things that literally just don't matter. I mean, like stop living to wear a certain number. I mean like, yeah, to be like a certain dress size or like just wear a certain number. And yeah, um, so that's that. And then moving on to, you know, how you can start implementing more self-love into your fitness journey or like just your fitness routine. Mr. Jamila? Pardon? Mr. Jamila, are you comfortable yeah. mixing the language with the local language? Um, no. <laughs> if you're not, then go ahead. Sure. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so um, how to start implementing more self-love into your fitness journey. I would say moving your bodies in ways that feel good. I know this might be different for like every single person. And I think it's always nice to have a workout buddy or someone to like keep you accountable and like to kind of keep you motivated and keep going. 
but then also appreciating that what you might find enjoyable is different to someone else is also like a good place to start because I've had like people come to me be like oh like I hate going for Zumba but like my friends love it and I don't know what else to do and I'm like okay well what do you enjoy doing and they're like oh I enjoy swimming and I'm like then go swimming by yourself and they're like oh but you know like my friends will be like oh it's not like as intense or whatever but it's like movement is different for everyone I feel like finding forms of exercises that you actually enjoy also help you be more consistent with it and because then it's less of like a drag and like less of a burden because you're also like finding it enjoyable which keeps you consistent into going so like the exercise I always like to use with people is like think back to like your childhood days what are the like five activities or like five exercises or things you love doing and like lost so much time in doing and like once you come up with those like how can you start implementing those into like your life for example I remember at some point like I loved just being outside and going on walks and like after a certain point I just stopped doing that like I guess all they get so like the past couple of years I've been like slowly trying to implement it back into my life I feel like recently I've kind of been slacking because of work and everything but whenever I get like the free time because regardless it's a form and it's like a way of moving your body and yeah so I feel like that exercise is a really good another way is to be mindful of the content or like information you consume both in person and online as well uh, because I so um, because for example let's say you had a trainer who you were seeing five days a week but like every session you went to they make comments about your body or like how you had to change it or how your legs were an issue or how your arms had an issue um, and like if you're you know that saying of like what you focus on grows you can't be in such like a headspace especially if someone you let's say for example look up to or like someone that you aspire to be speaking down to you that much like being in that space even if like you eventually what like reach your goal weight or whatever you just wouldn't be happy in it because you wouldn't feel enough because like the whole time the whole process everyone was like the person was telling you how your body was the issue and yeah I just feel like being mindful of like the content you consume and just the people you surround yourself with and I mean like the nice thing with like, Instagram now is, is that you can literally just like mute people if you let's say you're friends with them and like they always go on about I don't know like because I feel like a big trigger as well is you know like before and after pictures and I feel like with lockdown it was like such a big thing because I would get people mentioning me like oh but I just keep like putting on weight but like everyone is like you know transforming their bodies or whatever or like doing all this prog progress pictures and stuff and I feel like I don't know if you've noticed it well, like progress pictures, like the before picture is always like the person looking like sad or miserable and stuff. Then the after picture is like the living their best life and they're like so happy. And I feel like the sad thing about like the culture we live in is that we really glorify like weight loss. And we don't actually think how the person reached that weight or like what they did to lose that weight, you know? And I feel like weight gain is very like demonized, like how did they gain weight or like how could you or whatever, but it's like so many people like leave like eating disorders or like unhealthy like exercise um, mentalities to like when they heal from that, they bodies eventually like, you know, what's the word? Their bodies eventually I guess grow into like the body composition they were meant to be like regardless like through before like all the restriction and it's like they get so much shame like given to them for that but it's like when someone loses the weight like everyone is like just praising them but they don't actually know what they're going through or how they lost their weight you know so I feel like that's always key to keep in mind and also just be mindful of the conversations you have and also yeah like you don't have to let's say for example like you're in a setting where everyone and I feel like this always happens a lot like especially like when I came back home like the whole 
oh, you've gained so much weight for such a big topic. But this has been for people that saw me like 10 years ago. And it's like, yeah, like my body is allowed to change, you know? And it would be very different if I was like really like down and like sad about it. But it's just like, if you see someone okay or happy, or if you genuinely know the person and you see them happy, I just like don't comment on their weight. I feel like all about their parents, you know, there's so many other things we can talk about as people. But it's like, that's always the, the key thing people always bring. And it's like, you can talk about other things. Um, another thing to start, that you can start putting into your fitness journey to implement more self-love is setting goals that have nothing to do or are not centered around your body um, or like how it looks like. For example, switch out goals such as like wearing a certain number or like body measurements or even like progress pictures, even clothing size to more like non-body centered goals. For example, skill progression, you know, like let's say you, you know, start one, you want to get into like a more regular workout routine. And let's say, for example, if you never like worked out like your whole life, let's say, okay, but you played sport young. So for example, focusing on things of like, oh, I want to improve my mobility in my squats. Like I want to squat better. And like for that to happen, you improve your mobility, which basically means that you'll be able to like move better and like do other things. You just fun like your body basically just functions better. So I feel like focusing on like skill progression and like just mental well-being, like for example, your mood, kind of just checking in with yourself, like, oh, how am I feeling today? Um, other things you can use is like, mobility, like I said earlier, speed, stamina, and yeah, just using those tools to track your progress is a good way to start. Um, and then moving on to my favorite bit, which I love talking about is the whole focusing more on how you feel rather than how you look like. And I always say people are like, oh, but why? Because I feel like looking a certain way has always been like a key thing that We've like kind of like normalized and like when someone's like, oh, but like, how do you feel? And we're just like, wait, what? You know? Um, and like, I don't know. For me, like personally, I just feel like life is too short. Like I said this earlier, like it's just too short to be fixated on numbers, which when we do eventually go, like no one will care about or like no one will be speaking about. It's not even going to be like written anywhere of like how much you weighed or like how you had abs or like how toned you are you know and like like I said like even like no one's going to be speaking about it so why put so much focus on that and like prioritize that over like your own mental well-being because you'd find someone who has like the leanest legs they have abs they're so toned but it's like they're basically not living because they spend all their like mental energy and like just space focusing on like how am I going to fit in a session? How am I going to balance this? How am I going to, you know, eat these meals? Or like you go to an event and it's like, you're so anxious about like the food you're going to be consuming and all you keep worrying about is like how you're going to burn it off rather than actually enjoying the event. And like, I mean, I'm not saying that there's, it's not, I'm not saying it's wrong to have like aesthetic goals, but I'm saying that they shouldn't consume your life. And yeah, I feel it's like, it's honestly like a whole journey because I started about three years ago and like, I still find myself also falling back into those head spaces because like you see to everyone's social media and stuff. And yeah, it's just always about like being mindful. Um, another thing is I always feel like fitness should be a way to enhance your life rather than a burden. And like when people come and tell me like, oh, I never have time to like work out. Like, how do I balance it? And <clears throat> honestly, now having like a full-time job, I'm just like, I don't know how people do it. Especially like mothers and like parents, like balancing the whole thing is just, I don't know how you do it. So big up to you. Um, I always say just, it doesn't have to be long because I feel like people think to, move your body or to like get in a nice worker or like just enjoy exercise it has to be like an hour of like some zumba class or anything and that's why i always i keep my workouts on my page like very short like the longest is like 20 minutes but there's always options like how many sets you can do and how long each set will be and it's like you just need 12 minutes of your time um 
and you can also do it at home. Like most of my workouts I post are no equipment based. So you just use your body weight. If you have dumbbells or like resistance bands, that's like a bonus, but you don't need all these extra things to start working out or start moving your body or start implementing fitness into your life. And when you start to notice it's like a burden, kind of like just take a step back and like ask yourself why you're feeling that way. I feel like sometimes it's when we kind of put too much pressure on ourselves and you think you have to work out like six days a week for like this amount of hours at this exact time. And that's why I like about like the whole, like thinking of exercise more of like movement. So I think of fitness more of like moving your body rather than like exercising it. Because I feel like exercise to me personally, it sounds like it has to be quite intense in nature. And yoga counts as movement as well. Like it doesn't have to be intense. And like you still get all the benefits and like the whole feel good endorphins from it. And it's like, it doesn't have to be intense. Just, yeah, just focus on you. Don't look at like what so-and-so is doing because like everyone's life and everyone's circumstances and everyone's going through life differently. So just do what works for you. Even like those... um, Afrobeat dance workouts on like YouTube. I did those at some point. I was like, it makes it fun. I also feel like switching things up is also really good because sometimes I go for boxing, I do CrossFit, I go for runs, I go for walks, or I just do some stretches. And like every week is different. Just listening to your body and then like, oh, what am I in the mood of? Kind of helps as well. Um, and yeah, so then the last bit is kind of just talking about like how we got to this whole focusing on like the losing weight side of things or like just focusing on numbers or focusing more on how we look rather than how we feel. It's honestly just been like ingrained in us through like social media or like different like media outlets which are constantly like sending us messages that we're basically not enough. Like you don't look like this, you know, this lean, you know, as light as so-and-so and it's just, planting seeds of insecurities in our minds without us actually noticing. And then all these companies start to like benefit from us, like from those insecurities of like, you find like these like lose weight in like two weeks or like all these laxative um, teas that sell themselves in like forms of teas, but it's just like, but they're not actually tackling the real issue of why you don't feel good in yourself. It's kind of just like masking it. And then they're just like profiting from that um but no, yeah that's my whole talk so thank you for listening you can find me on as i said earlier you can find me on instagram my instagram is dos underscore of underscore jam and my website is www.jamsfit.co and like i said i do classes at crossfit kampala uh, we also have like a ladies only class which i find is like really cool um and i need the class so yeah thank you i don't know did anyone have any questions um hanifa Yeah, honestly, feel free to ask your questions. I don't know how it works. Yeah, but... um, I'm here. I'll help. Hanifa, unmute. Okay. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. Questions regarding um, if you have limit and like limited time, like you have responsibility, family, and whatnot, you have limited time. Let's say thirty to forty-five minutes. What do you consider exercise? Is it cardio or is it weightlifting? Um, it could be any. I always feel like switching things up helps because if you stick or focus on one, like a month down the line, you get tired of it. And like the whole point of fitness is making it more of a, like a lifestyle rather than something you just do for like a week consistently and then it drops. 
So I feel like always switching things up because I don't know if you said 20 to 45 minutes, because honestly, that's plenty of time. Like for them, for example, the workouts I do are like 20 minutes long. And I do those what, like four or five times a week. So they're really not long at all. And yeah, you can get in a good worker in that, that rate. Cause there's like loads of, if you prefer follow or long workouts, there's like loads on like um, YouTube that you can follow along. And so you're working with the trainer or on Instagram, there's like so many people that post workouts, which are like really quick and you can just go through those movements with them. Thank you. Umtahan. Yes, salam alaikum. Thank you, Jamila, for this very interesting discussion. Um, my question for you is, you mentioned about um, people who are slim and toned, not having much of a life or having that stress of when they're going to events and um, thinking, oh, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do? Can you just maybe talk about finding the right balance? How do you find the right balance between the fitness and actually just living your life? Um, I feel like a nice place to start is like actually asking yourself what your goals in life are, you know, because there's actually people that, for example, profit, like let's say people in the bodybuilding industry or they do such events that actually profit or their life is their body looking a certain way. But if you kind of ask yourself, like, all you want to do is like, you know, spend time with your family or like live a life where you can actually spend time with your family and like enjoy playing games with like your cousins or whatever, then you start to pinpoint just how to, you start to like prioritize things. So like when you go to like certain events, it's not on your mind. But I feel like it's definitely like the whole, learning like the other side of it. So like I read like a fair amount of books on like intuitive eating or things that are in like intuitive movement and stuff. Cause when I came from like the whole keeping my, wanting my body to like, keeping my, wanting to keep my body like a certain way, kind of just like having to leave that mindset. But yeah, I feel like to find a balance is all about asking yourself like what actually matters to you and not listening what everyone else would say. Cause I feel like some people, cause if I listen to like all the comments people would like say to me, like once I went to like the doctors for something for like my ear and like how one of the nurses was like, oh, like you need to lose weight. It was just like, but it has nothing to do with my ear, you know what I mean? And yeah, just like listening to what actually matters to you and like listen to what actually feels good for you. Because I feel like even when you, um, because I feel like you can over restrict yourself and then you can go the other spectrum of like when you just like over, I don't like that word saying overindulge, but just going like the other side of it I don't know if that makes sense and like yeah I feel like just bring yourself to it is just kind of asking yourself what matters to you I don't know if that answered your question um, Tahan, was your question answered I think she muted herself <clears throat> but I think she said yes okay Nalongo Namudu, please unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, um, Jamila, thank you so much for your talk. I just had a small question. What's your take on waist training? Like um, these sweat builds and stuff, do they really work? Are you really losing fat or are you just losing water? Um, I've never actually like done proper research into it. I personally don't use them and I like, never recommend people to use them because I've had like it restricts, uh, like it restricts your oxygen intake or like how your body moves. So I'm not like a hundred percent sure on it, but, um, I feel like it has more to do with like water weight because if you're sweating more, you're losing more water rather than losing fat if that makes sense mm -hmm. but like i said i'm not 100 sure on the whole waist training like waist sweatband thingies okay thank you no. salam 
I think it's Salam or something. Salam or something. Unmute yourself. Yali wandika, yali wandika ubi, uh, yali gata. Salim Sumin. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa My questions, I think I have like three. The first one, how do I know how much weight I should be lifting? In... Another one. Yeah. Should I bring them all or you will answer one by one? Um, yeah, let me answer one by one so then I don't forget. So okay. in regards to how much weight you should be lifting, I feel like focus more on your technique. So if your technique is well, you can increase your weight because you don't want to be increasing your weight by your, your technique is off and then you end up injuring yourself, especially because some injuries then take way longer for you to cover by. So I say... Focus more on your technique. So always getting a coach that is well, is like knowledgeable in that side of things or like the movements you're doing is also key. So yeah, focusing more on technique. And then as your technique progresses, then the lifting heavier weights also progresses as well. Okay, the next one. Um, are abdominal exercises effective if at all I want to lose extra fat around my stomach? Um, I'd say abdominal exercises strengthen your core muscles. So they don't necessarily allow, they, don't, they, don't, they won't necessarily lead you to getting visible abs. For example, I do a fair amount of ab work, but I don't have like visible abs at all. And I don't know if I ever will, because also genetics plays a role in that. Which I just feel like many people don't mention, especially those that have visible abs and like that's their kind of selling point when, on Instagram or when they're selling specific fitness programs is people hold fat in like different ways and exercise, like your body responds to exercise differently. For example, me and you could be eating the exact same, doing the exact same workout, but at the end of like, let's say a few months over, yeah, we'll still look completely different because we, because of our genetics and everything we hold, fat and our body composition is different and unique in its own way. So yeah, I would say core exercises will strengthen your, so ab exercises will strengthen your core muscles, which again is really good because if you have a strong core, it puts less um, strain on like your lower back and it basically just helps you move a lot better without you realizing and also will help with the lifting as well okay the last one um can you tell how many calories are burned while walking or jogging one mile and um like which advice do you give someone who is trying to get rid of fat but there is no change in anything okay? like i'm trying to get rid of my fats but nothing changes <laughs> Um, wait, so why do you want to get rid of the fat? Huh? Why do you want to get rid of the fat? Because sometimes you feel like you're weighing too much or like <laughs> you need to cut some fat. So. See, I would say to like, like you said now, like focus more on feeling lighter and not lighter in the sense of losing weight but just lighter in your self for example even like the past couple of weeks I feel like my eating was just not great so like just in myself I just felt so heavy and just meh and I feel like switching or like just how um I mean was talking about like how vegetables like help so much in like your mood and stuff just switching up your habits will help but yeah I'll say focus more on like feeling good rather than like losing the fat. And I feel like they will coincide together regardless. Cause yeah, that's what I'd say. I'd say focus more on like the feeling good side of things. Rather than okay. the then about the calories, can you tell how much? Um I don't know. Okay. Because yeah. Question. Yeah. When it time when it, in terms of the calories, everybody's body is different. 
how much calories I will burn and how much Jamila will burn will be different according to your body composition. We could be the exact same weight. I could be 65 kilograms and you could be 65 kilo kilograms. But because our body composition is completely different, that means that we will burn calories differently. So if you really wanted to know how specifically your specific body, how many calories your specific body burns according to a particular exercise, then you have to have a body composition test done by either a nutritionist or a physiotherapist or a fitness therapist because that's very specific usually like these fitbits and all these other apps they give you a general they give you a general amount they don't give you one that's specific for your body and most of those fitness apps are usually their data is made based on white people and white people's body is different to black people's body and asian people's bodies so if you wanted a specific measure for how many calories your body burns or your BMR, we call it BMR, your body metabolic, your, bo your basal metabolic rate, then we have to do an assessment of your, 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 of your body composition. So you can try the apps, but those apps are give and take. You can, they're estimates, they're not specific. And Jamila couldn't tell you how many calories you need just by looking at you in a picture because we don't don't know your body or muscle how much muscle you have how much fat do you have how much fluid do you have all of those things go into making that assessment so you would need to make an appointment with either me or Jamila or someone else to find your specific number okay then uh, if others don't mind I would like to ask uh, what happens to the body if you've been used to like gymming uh, doing exercises and then you stop because I've seen there is a there is someone in Uganda recently he died it's like he was too much and addicted to gyming but after maybe sometimes he stopped then he, he maybe his body got affected in one way or another so what happened is to someone's body if at all he has been exercising every day and then he stopped um it did should I answer this Jamila yeah you can answer yeah, it depends on the person. If somebody has been exercising every single day aggressively in the gym, they could be also using steroids and it may have been the steroids that affected his health. But if you are exercising every day and then you stop exercising, of course, the your body is going to you're, you're not going to become unhealthy, but you, you can't maintain it. Like if you want a six pack, for example, you would have to exercise regularly and keep exercising for the rest of your life even a nutritional diet. If you're trying to lose weight and you go on a diet for three weeks or three months and then you stop, the weight is gonna come back. When it comes to health and wellness, you have to think about a lifestyle, not a term, not a specific set time. It has to be, your, you have to change your life completely. So don't take on goals that you cannot maintain for the rest of your life. Going to the gym every single day is an unrealistic goal that nobody can maintain for the rest of their lives. So working out three times a week or working out 10 minutes a day is a more realistic goal. Because if you start working out three times a week or three, every three hours every single day, you're gonna be exhausted, you're gonna get tired. And he may, that person who died may have had other health conditions, may have had heart conditions or other things that contributed to their death. But exercising and stopping is ineffective and is not part of a healthy lifestyle. A healthy lifestyle is in the title, lifestyle. Not a healthy diet, not a healthy month, a healthy lifestyle for the rest of your life. Okay. I think those are the questions. Amina, if you can bring in um, another presenter. Okay. So, uh, Usama, Usama, Amina, before you, uh, before another presenter, Baker Chindi has a question. Has his hand up? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, there are so many people trying to basically lose weight and everything. So we try so many methods. And mm. one of the things they tell us is probably food or something. Like sometimes you might exercise or have a routine. But mm -hmm. sometimes they tell us stop eating rice or something like that. Um, is there any specific food that people shouldn't be eating? Those that are looking to lose weight. Because... Um, Sometimes they tell you don't eat rice, so you spend the whole month not eating rice, but then nothing happens. So what kind of mm -hmm. advice would you give is in regards to what food people should be eating? 
when it comes to weight management, everybody's body is different. There's no one answer that fits every single person. Everyone on this room, the 79 people, all have 79 different requirements. So I cannot say that everybody should stop eating rice, or everybody should stop drinking milk, because I don't know your what goes into a nutritional assessment is your clinical history. We look at your clinical history, um, your medical history, your family history, the conditions that run in your family, your body composition, because somebody who carries their weight in their stomach and somebody who carries their weights in their hips, those people require different nutrition. We look at your environmental factors like your salary, how much do you make, where do you live, what food is available around you, all of those things go into making a specific nutritional um, assessment for somebody. And most times why people fail is because they follow general diets they found on the internet, which are made for general people. It's not made for your specific body. So if you are serious about trying to lose weight, then you need to get a specific nutritional assessment for your specific body, looking at your everything about you that is specific about you as an individual. So I can't tell you what food to stop eating because the food you should stop eating may be different to the food that Uncle Zaidi should be eating X, Y, Z. But the general, the, the, the most thing that I can tell you is to, is if you're trying to lose weight, the food group that you should avoid everyone generally is to do, to um, minimize complex, Simple carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are all like white flour products and processed foods. The reason why simple carbohydrates are bad for weight management is because you could be exercising and working out and you're not losing weight because you're consuming simple carbohydrates. When your body exercises, it uses the carbs before the fat. So if you are exercising your body, the energy it's using is the carbohydrates rather than the fat. So you may have somebody who's working out all the time and they're not losing weight because their diet is still high in carbs, in, in simple carbohydrates. So like some athletes, before they go for a race, they do the opposite. They fill up on carbohydrates because they want they don't want their body to lose energy. So they use, so they carb load. Oh. But if you are trying to lose weight, general my general advice that I can give someone is to try and avoid carbohydrates if late, if weight loss is your goal. I was going to ask that because I've got two, I've got a brother called Faisal and a friend called Ibra. It's like the food they eat, I can literally not eat, but for them, they lose weight, you know? So I'm like, that's what I was going to ask, you know? So yes. everybody, uh, it, could, it could be a hormone imbalance. It could, it could even be a, a nutrient deficiency. If you have, there are some people who have nutrient deficiencies that affect their metabolism. So somebody, someone could have, like, could be anemic and that affects their metabolism. So it's very specific and once you find the right thing for you, you will find the weight losing, off, the weight dropping off. But if you keep following general Mr. Google, it's not going to help you. Okay. So is there anyone here that provides that kind of help in terms of an, and um, assessing someone to see what type of diet they should be on? I can help you with that. Okay. I can help you with that. Since you're in the UK, I can help. In Uganda, I can help more because we can get... You can get blood tests done in Uganda, but in the UK, I can still help you. I can still help you if you can contact me, Amina's Healthy Kitchen, Instagram, or YouTube, or I've put my email address in the comments now, and um, we can work out something. Amina, that one, he loves chapati. Amina, <laughs> Rebecca loves chapati so much, so you uh, tell him to get off chapatis. You have to stop if you want to lose weight, chill the chapati. The food they could have been told to stop eating rice and then he eats potatoes. No, exactly. You can't do that. <laughs> so I should just stick to salads, yeah, like goats, yeah. No, yeah, I'm you, not gonna you, tell you to stick to salads. No, you eat my that's not... and he and he hates broccoli, he hates and... <laughs> he hates vegetables. And the UK has I'm the UK broccoli. has so many good vegetables, and the UK has so much good stuff. Even in like Uganda, what? we have good stuff. You just have to find things that you like. If you don't like broccoli, it's okay. I like broccoli. Well, okay. So try and eat more vegetables. Okay. Yes. And okay. The, the thing is, people don't realize one of the key things about having a healthy lifestyle is having cooking skills. Mm. The more you can cook, the more healthier you will eat. Because most people mm. give up because they only know how to cook spinach one way. They only know how to boil a vegetable. And they'll get bored of it. 
But if you mm. have good cooking skills and you have many recipes, you'll never get tired of eating healthily because you have a new, you'll be eating a different thing every day. So cooking skills are a part of a healthy lifestyle. Okay. You've got to learn to cook baker. Okay. <laughs> Huh? No frying it. No, not frying <laughs> broccoli, just boiling it, Baker. <laughs> no frying okay. broccoli. Let's move to another question because of time. Yes. Fat, Fatum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zechibuzo chang'e. Njagala oba waliye dagala simanya. Adelka mbuze muluka na kuwalu zungu sirumanyi. Fine. Kuanga in the my body, get when bangage young get your hips in a cabina and two way. No one ball would talk. Nezaro one of us all band banga massiva would talk banga. I have to come catini, you know, remember who took a cassigala catch. Gacatini, Uncle and Jawadi, a chance of all of causes and name Beranga, Mobili Ganga, Buga Jawa, now one over. That's how that's how Allah made your body. Everybody has they everybody deposits their fat in a different place in their body. So if that's how Allah made your body, then that's there's nothing you can do to change that apart from plastic surgery. So you just have to work to make sure that you maintain a healthy weight. And there's no like I said before, I never recommend any product, any tablet, any milk. I only recommend natural things from the market. If you want to have a healthy lifestyle, your pharmacy is the market. You should never be taking tablets or dagala or X, Y, Z. So I hope that answered your question. And I want to move on to uh, Sharifa's presentation. Okay, Neya Sharifa um, is a marriage counselor and a life coach. And she's going to be talking to us about how counseling can help self self love through counseling. Sharifa, you take it over. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to thank Uma Connect for this opportunity. It's really, really appreciated. And I also want to thank Jamila and Amina for your presentations. They were really beautiful. And I'll just get right to it. We're in February. Next week is Valentine's Day. Yeah, people keep saying, and I want to tell you that it is okay because you see, people are drawing a lot of focus on romantic relationships because of Valentine's, but we are going to flip the script right now and focus on the kind of relationship you have with yourself because this is a self-love webinar. I want you to know that the relationship you have or the way you treat and love yourself is exactly going to be the way people and most especially your partner is going to treat you. So let me just um, put up these notes. Can I give me a minute? Okay, so I was talking about Valentine's. I want this year for all of us on this screen to make sure that self-love is our new relationship goals. Forget about everything you see on social media. We are going to make it about self-love. And I need to explain what self-love means because yeah, the questions are killing me. What do you mean by self-love? What do you mean I have to start loving myself, but I do ABC, I go for massage, I do my money pedis, you see my hair is done. I mean, is it not self-love enough? And I'm sorry, my screen is not working, so I'm just gonna leave that. Yeah, like I was saying, that is self-care. The massages, the pedicures, the manicures, all that is self-care. It is part of self-love. And yes, it is also necessary, but self-love is way, way, way deeper than that. Self-care is the part of self-love that involves you to take care of yourself in the moment. But self-love, on the other hand, takes us into a deeper 
a deeper, deeper place than self-care. And self-love invites us to self-acceptance. Many of us here don't accept ourselves the way we are. So there is self-love lacking on that specific issue. Self-love invites us not to judge the self-care we need. You know, but you need it. Why do you feel bad about making yourself feel good? You know, now you're lacking self-love. You don't want to even spend 100000 on yourself because, I mean, you know, and self-love also centers on accepting both our lovable and unlovable parts. This is all self-love. I'm, I'm trying to explain what self-love means in, in general. And self-love is also the intimacy with our truths, gentleness with our faults, honesty with our yearnings and appreciation for what makes each of us here special. Self-love means that you recognize and prioritize your happiness and well-being. It means you take better care of yourself both mentally and physically. It is about embracing and accepting yourself wholeheartedly, unapologetically. You come first. You matter. And the minute you realize this is the day you're going to feel a total difference in your life. I want to stress the fact that when I tell you to love yourself this much, I don't mean you should become mean, ignore other people's needs, especially your significant other. I don't mean you should be egocentric. I don't mean you should be super obsessed with yourself. No. I'll just give an example of what I mean by this kind of self-love. If you've ever been on an airplane, I'm sure many of you have. And those who haven't, let me just tell you what happens there. We are told by the flight attendant that in case of an emergency, regardless of who is nearby, it is critical to put your oxygen mask first. In case of an emergency, you must put your oxygen mask first before you help anybody near you. Does this make you selfish? It doesn't. How will you help the next person if you're dying? You can't. So this is what self-love is all about. You must take care of yourself first before you take care of anybody else. Be it your child, be it your husband, be it your wife, be it your relatives. You must be in a good place, both mentally and physically and spiritually, to be able to take care of other people. You just cannot pour from an empty cup. This is what they mean when they say that. You must take care of yourself first. And a better example of this, when I say that you must take care of yourself before you take care of others, I would like to give an example of uh, a person. Just, just imagine you're walking around with a sharp stone in your shoe. I don't know if anyone has ever experienced that. Imagine that scenario. You're walking around consumed by so much pain. And no matter who you meet on the way, whether or not they are pleasant, your focus is going to be drawn on the pain. It's in your head. You're feeling it. You won't focus on the interaction you have with these people you're meeting on the road. So the minute you remove that stone, you're going to realize it was ruining all your interactions with all these people be it a friend, be it a husband, be it a child, that you didn't even realize how it was ruining everything that you were doing with these people that you met on the way. So this pain has affected your relationship with them because it made everything difficult for you to be present in the moment. And this is what many of us are doing in relationships. We are unaware that we are carrying so much baggage, unresolved baggage, And it's spoiling our relationships. It's killing everything in our relationships. So, Shamila, is the, Sharifa, is the is the presentation not working? You can't click on it. No, I have failed to connect. I tried. Okay, I tried. Connie, no problems. If you tap on slideshow, tap on slideshow at the top. Slideshow, 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 slideshow. The top. After animation. <clears throat> No, 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 up. The tab bar next to, next to home. Mm -hmm. All right. And then from beginning. All right. From beginning. 
Okay, then now you can move to whichever there you want. There we are. Thank you. All right. Where was I? Akagato, Akainja Mungato, yes. Many of us are moving around with Aka, Akainja in the shoe and we don't even realize. We don't mind Akainja Kemungato. For some, in Zukubanga, wait. Wait, Yakumazeke, medium, that you hate yourself so much and you want to never have a compliment. Tojisima, Oweda Mukwe Kudadida with Kaseda. I mean, if you can't appreciate yourself, Oyagala Bawa Kusi Matia. Gomusaja, if you can't appreciate yourself, Oyagala Muchala Wakusi Matia. You know? So we have to first of all realize what our issues are, sort them out, heal. Take care of those issues so that we don't project our wounds and bleed on the people that we love. You must envision filling yourself up with love from the inside and out so that you can pour an overabundance of love in the relationships that you have. So this takes me to the next topic, the most important topic is why I am here today, self-love in relationships. Self-love in a relationship means that you show up in a relationship as an empowered, strong, confident, secure, and healthy partner. You must feel whole. You must not have the need for external validation. You must love your partner from a place of being fulfilled rather than a place of feeling empty, needy, and most importantly, you will understand your needs. If you have self-love, you will know what you want. You will know what you don't like. You will know what things you can't stand. You will be able to communicate effectively with your partner because you know what makes you happy. You know what you like. This is the beauty about self-love. When you practice self-love, you'll know exactly how you want to be treated. You will not settle for anything less than you deserve. And if you keep practicing self-love, I want to go back to Amina and uh, Jamila. Many of us are facing issues with weight gain, weight loss, how we eat, we don't love our bodies, we don't love ourselves. I'm glad they spoke first so that you know what you should do if you're facing those specific issues. When you practice self-love, you will show your self-love and set the tone how you want to be loved and how you want to be treated. Simply put, when you treat yourself with love and compassion and forgiveness, your partner will most definitely treat you the same way. You must keep in mind that a healthy relationship starts with you. A happy relationship starts with two individuals. If I am happy and my husband is happy, we will share that love. But if I am a miserable person, no matter what my husband does, tidy in sanusa, because deep down there is Nina Kainja Kange Mungato, and I am not sorting it out. So if you want a healthy relationship, look inwards. What do you need to sort? What do you need to work on? What do you need to heal? Is it something from the past? What is bothering you? These are the things that you need to always ask yourself. You just have to keep in mind that nobody in this world can make you happy. Nobody. It's nobody's responsibility to make you happy but yourself. When you show up in a relationship and you know how to practice self-love, you're not going to set unrealistic expectations for your partner. You will not put unwanted pressure on them because they're not responsible for your happiness and the insecurities that you have that you're projecting on them. They are not responsible for all these things. You know, when it comes to relationships, you must be what you want to attract. You must know your virtue. You must. Whoever you attract is loving you for you should love you for you, not a compromised version of yourself. It's important, I will stress this, it's important that you sit down and realize what matters to you, what makes you happy, what makes you shine, and then do that. This is how you start practicing self-love. I want to give you a few ways to get started on how you can practice self-love. One, I want you to be aware of how you talk to yourself. You know what's half power. Ovida or Eva Gwenga, Tawekiri Dizamu. Somebody tells you, Neo, you will make it. Okay, but why? 
Remember, you're listening. You're telling yourself these things, but you're listening. So, okay, you talk Jack Sobola, then not Jack because you keep telling yourself this, then eventually you will believe it. So, you need to be very careful how you speak to yourself. You need to put a positive spin on all this negativity. You know what? I can't keep doing this. I think I can do ABC. I will try. I will do ABC to see that I get to where I want to be. You make yourself feel bad about yourself, your self pity, and all that. Number two, how we talk about ourselves to others or personal branding or quenyoma. You need to work on this. This is another way to start practicing self love. Have confidence. Rachel Reda Waiter, you know what you're capable of and what you've never tried. Just put it in your mind that I will try. But don't go around telling her, I won't even bother trying because I, I don't think I can do it. Why? See, you're telling the other person that you actually can't do this. They're so, they going to treat you the same way because you've told them you can't do it. So they won't even give you the chance. They won't even want to listen. This is how it works. And then another way that we can practice self-love is to stop judging ourselves with this lens of perfection, you know, always striving for flawlessness. We always want to set an excessive high performance standard. Yes, it, it, it could be a good thing, but nobody's perfect and nobody will ever be perfect. This is something about self-love that you need to understand. Today, you're not perfect. You've done something. It didn't go well. Alhamdulillah. It doesn't mean that we're going to just because you tried this and it didn't work out. No. It's okay to not have things figured out sometimes. If it fails today, you try again tomorrow. It's okay to not be perfect. You try again tomorrow. This is another way to practice self-love. So I would like to ask you, you can just answer silently. When you make a mistake, do you ever scold yourself? Or do you think, okay, now I know better. Next time I will know what to do. Another question. When you talk to others about yourself, do you display comfort with who you are or do you diminish yourself through your own words and actions? If your answer to the first question was you scold yourself when you make a mistake, then you're lacking when it comes to practicing self-love. A mistake should be a lesson. Okay, next time I'm going to try in a different way. Next time I will do better. When you're talking to others about yourself, how do you display yourself? What do you tell them about you, especially those that don't know you? Somebody gives you a compliment and, and you take it the wrong way. You don't even appreciate it because you don't believe in yourself. You don't love yourself enough to even take a compliment. So these things have to change if you're going to start to practice self-love. How we perceive and treat ourselves is very apparent to others, apparently. How you take yourself is how I'm definitely going to see you. I mean, I don't know you. You know yourself better than I. Accept yourself for the imperfect, perfectly capable person that you are. You need to learn to put a more positive and supportive spin on everything that goes on in your life. Everything doesn't have to go your way. It doesn't mean that in no. no. Things can always be better. So, Tula Webu, did they ask yourself, Kayinja Kangecha Kandi Mongato, that I need to sort out? Because that Kayinja is the one that's going to harm your relationship, be it with a workmate, be it with your partner, be it with a child. If you don't heal, if you don't learn to love yourself, if you don't take care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, it is going to affect everybody around you another way to practice self-love is setting boundaries many of us have a problem with this especially in relationships many of us don't set boundaries we go around letting people do whatever they want to do with us or to us and I'm here to tell you today that <clears throat> if you don't want something in your life, you need to set that boundary right now. It doesn't make me happy. It hurts my feelings. It makes me feel a certain way. Be anybody. 
boundaries are for anything that just isn't healthy for you be it a friend be it a job be it a workmate be it anybody anything even if it's even if it's an in-law it's very important if you're going to start practicing self-love to learn how to set boundaries accept things that work for you accept things that you love that make you happy draw the line do not blur any line she made it clear. You don't want to ask my aunt. Eh, she ever made a girl into be a kumbu gorilla. Eh, she ever tagged a girl into be a queen. Get a new bed. Eh, she ever tagged a man. You know, everybody will know, and they will respect it. Another way to practice self-love is by knowing where we are spending our emotional, mental, financial, and physical energy. You need to make your priorities really clear. Have them in the right order. These activities do they bring back joy in your life? Do they bring connection? Do they nurture you? Are they creative in your life? Bikuyamba, where you're spending most of your time? Where are you spending most of your financial energy? Where are you spending most of your physical energy? Where are you spending most of your mental energy? Even to be doing now, you have to pay attention to the things that you're doing in your daily life. Are they helping you be a better person? Are they helping you be a better version of yourself? Because if they are not, then you need to cut them off. This is how we practice self-love. Again, I don't mean you should be mean. I don't mean you should be selfish. I don't mean you should become a bad person. No. Why do you do all these things? Trying to love yourself, trying to be kind to yourself, trying to care for yourself. You're going to have a certain peace of mind within you. This is where the love will come from, to take care of other people, to love others. Another way that you can practice self-love is by making time to do whatever you love, to just have fun, to just play without worrying about wasting time. I know of people who will come over for a weekend, you're starting to swim and they are worried. They've been here two hours, they're like, but I have to go back home, but I get no college, no good day on college, no good day. As in, they're not even enjoying the two hours they have, even the time they've chosen to enjoy themselves they are not even enjoying it because they are worried about something else. They feel like they're actually wasting time. But this matters to you. This makes you happy. So why are you not giving it time? Why are you not cherishing that moment? These are very important things. Just find something you like to do and then do it unapologetically. As long as you're not hurting anybody around you, please, I'm begging you, self-love, self-care, these things are important. You will not be able to love your wife. You will not be able to love your husband. Because you have something that's bothering you. You have a kantulusi kaba na katini nyo. Sort it out. Come home with your happiness. Let your partner come home with their happiness. Mugate happiness. Share that happiness together. Find an activity you love to do. Do it. Look forward to doing something you love. If there is anything you don't want to do, don't do it. This is self-love that I'm talking about. Somebody has invited you to go for karaoke. You don't like karaoke, but you keep saying, yes, yes, yes. Every time you have to go, gendo, CDF, face. Don't do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. It's that simple. It's that simple. Always look forward to doing things you love. And you don't have to. It's not a must. Another way to practice self-love is to just block all the opinions of other people. Yes, care about people, but do not care about what they think of you. I think the first thing you should care about is your Lord. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, we are fine. Now, everything else is background noise. As long as those things are in order, do not care about what people think of you. Please, 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 please. The best thing you can do for yourself when this happens is look into it. Look into what we're saying. If there is any truth in it, but if you don't feel like there is actually anything you're doing wrong, stick to it. People have a tendency of always putting us down with all the negative talk, you know? Don't listen to it. This is another way of practicing self-love. 
it all starts with you. If you allow others to treat you unfairly, it signifies on an unconscious level that you're feeling unworthy. You need to maintain a healthy relationship with yourself by placing a value on self-love. It all starts with you. A healthy relationship starts with you. Nobody else. So before I conclude, I would like, uh, I'm going to leave a quiz. Uh, we will share it with you via your emails. So if you don't mind leaving them behind, we'll share it with you. And it's going to be like a takeaway for you to go home. Also, remember where would you do gambe? Mm, well, you know, could choose some. I have to do ABC. I don't think I'm doing this right. So it will help. But uh, for now, that is all I had. And if you ever need more of this, I'm, I'm cutting all this short because of time. But you can follow me on my Instagram. Let's fix it counseling on my Facebook, my Twitter. I post all these things there and. I've also left my number down below. You'll find it in case you ever need a session. You can just call me and we schedule for one. And uh, that is all I had for now. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please. Thank you. So uh, much. Thanks, Sharifa. Thanks, Sharifa, for that beautiful presentation. Um, Self love, self love. Uh, I learned how to love myself, man. Um, uh, and uh, I think there's a question before I come in. Uh, Slaman Suvga, you have the mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mine won't be a question directly, but uh, kind mm. of a uh, uh, addition to what is being said with, uh, from all the presenters. Twa yanzi zanyo awa awa deva tuvoli dal hamdulillah. Mbadi mwa deva gamanti deva deva taga mukuru gando rutonto no. Yes, uh, that's very good that you've been uh, uh, adding some luganda within your presentation. That's very good. Yes, uh, one of the ways really we can uh, you know try to benefit from what has been said so far is addition of bringing the sunnah into our life. If we can try to learn what really a 24 hours a time, a 24 hours day look like according to the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Really, this will help us a lot because as we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do normally, most people, is to go to the toilet to, waste, to, 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 to empty you know, the, the waste products from the body. And then second is the cleanliness. So, and then after that, then we connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either we're going to start a salat fajil or you know, then in that time you connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not with that spiritual connection or with the, you know, with the power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then all these the daily activities which you have to do on a daily basis, you know. Then after that, you look what the Rasulullah did after his, his 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 morning rituals. You know, you know, sitting with his family, visiting his family, and then prepare for your lunch. You know, as Sister Amina was saying, we have to engage ourselves in cooking as men as well. You know, not let the ladies only, but men as well. We we engage we engage ourselves in the kitchen activities. You know, cooking, washing the dishes, helping at home. Like now we are we at home. With this, with this lock, lock down. So, 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 all those activities will help to, 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 to cut off some calories. And then, like now, we've been sitting for almost two hours. You know, within those two hours, really, we, we could have have a little pause. You stand up, do some, uh, you know, movements. Have a glass of water around you. Have a fruit with you. So, all this, you know, you think about what you eat, what you drink. Water is the best drink. Any drink which is colored really is that's not good for the for the system. For water and then fruit instead of having juices, have a fruit as itself. You know, you know, instead of you know put it into a, a juice form, because as you are chewing, this is very good for your for for for, for your teeth for your you know that, 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 that digestion rather than having it in the juice form. So 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 then how we breathe. You know, or to That's also very important. You know, uh, then having a positive uh, mindset. You know, get a sister wabadagam banti the two angabuchimu to chwala in the negative way. Then we have a positive mindset. Nechi tumo wabo good day. 
Then you go, no, no, myself, I can do it next time. Okay, today I failed, or oh, there was a mistake there, I can do it next time. So, so having that positive mindset is very important. But above all this, really, let us learn the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu Like Sister Amina said about the eating, one-third food, one-third water, one-third leave the system to digest. Mixed within one meal. No yom chere, lumonde, muogo, kaunga, within one meal, one city. That's too much. We'll confuse the system when it's the, making the digestion. So if you are having matoke in lunch, then uh, night, dinner time, then you can have something else. And then the portion, again, as well. Or what, or chivatu, chomukonogo. That should be your, your meal. Then no gatako, uh, you know, vegetables. And, and then, uh, you know, then exercises. So let us learn the sooner way. And inshallah, this will help us. And then we have a good life. And then community medical checkups and dental checkups. changes as soon as possible. in the last minute, get into chukuze and what they kuze in the medication in Rusta Yakola Burundi, treatment. But if we start earlier, the treating the disease or anything changes them in the system, then that's the best. So let us uh, try to connect ourselves with a, a medical team. No one will know medical person go, 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 you consult with, or a dental person you consult with. Then what we talk about nutrition information, whatever, then they can guide you, direct you. Or what we talk about fitness, weight management. Ngamukuru was back, I was talking about the weight management. Yes, we are depending on our cars. We're sitting too much in our cars. We are sitting too much in our offices. So all these things really we have to look into. It could have been more, but because of time, I think I have to stop there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Thank you, Brother Sulaiman. Uh, Sharifa, um, that, that was a, a supplement. Um, I think the first step, I don't know what, what, what you're going to say about this, Sharifa. The first yes, step yes. to loving yourself yes. is learning how to, uh, to take away and relieve the stress and that depression around you. And um, I think what goes stress in your life, no uh, longer you are happy, but you are happy, or later you are happy. Because uh, what I found, I found out is that um, learning to forgive creates a new happiness in your life. Allah, Allah, Kaulhu, each gambo cha Allah each tofu. Allah talimba ya ya atu gaman tu beringa tu sonyi wanyo ya. Nchi sanzinga oksonyi wa forgiving is creates a new so much happiness in your life. From time ago to kubera ko. Uh, to wear a kidida, yeah. Um, so, um, it's single put up and nature in nature, Kuria, Kwangoina, or Mutu go or go and you do out, Mutu, you know, to go go, go all and now, you know, to go go. But if you take away that, and the other thing is a river bill, Khalil, um, being contented, be, be, be content with the little you have, um, Boveranga. Tetuganye fena tu agalo kola tu 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 fene chino tu fene chito tu fene chidi yes, but learn to work within your means. Um, overenga chito no chow ina okuta na chow. Ojako ojako sanganga. You live in a mansion. You live in Kololo. You live in Muyenga. You live in you live here in London. You live in USA. Nenga uh, you 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 married. You have kids. Nenga totally happy. Nengo mkazi woku mzigo woku mzigo ina tete ne msajja we bali mkazi go kamu nobody happy cause cause the contentment ije bali na mwami wange tuja kufuna nga bagala na just ne ba wanga ali miaka nsamvu ne go gwali na sente nyinji no fa ku miaka na ata atano because to but they happy what does in any happiness okweya gala kwa kwa kubula 
Right. Yeah. So right. um, what do you say about that, Sharifa? No, you're actually making very good points. You're making very good points. I, I usually tell people on the anger, they say it's like poison. you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. No, but as when you are. Onyeze, na yori gonye gide. They're moving on with their lives. Ne kudye no fa. It's killing you. But then the only thing, it's so lo kuchija wo kutula wansi ne mwogera ganya. No, so you are. No kakanyobusungu. That can actually do a lot for a person. I will tell you where you get the water. It's a very important issue, by the way. The past. We need to always look into these things. What exactly is causing me to be so depressed? What exactly is making me so angry? Why am I so unhappy? Our partners, don't call it a but you can't put such an expectation on somebody else. And I would go on to you, don't know what makes you happy. To my chichukutu, Sizawori, what has made you angry? What has made you so sad? What has made you so depressed? What to know moving to the Chikwanguida, Okwete is not the Wakanga to Inachi. You don't have that anger, you don't have that stress, you don't have that bitterness, the resentment. So to get it too for forgiving is a very important, very, very important issue in general and in relationships. Obusungu no bakasal salama to gamba and tea. Obusungu go shaitan. Ida wofuna gobusungu. That that's the time you will make the worst speech in your life. You will do the worst actions in your life. So to gezanga konyokwe wo did it because I'm sure everybody knows themselves better than anybody in this world. And even the relationship they have with themselves. So once we look into that, I am so certain that we can actually learn how to practice self-love. This is weighing me down. And yes, about contentment. contented even in the little that they have. So, each single loser to take up pressure, again, social media, no double mona postings like a fan and yeah, you are no, you are no gamba, a mama, no me gomba, no dango, no lambo, quit the co. But you'll come to learn a little bit and to the mula more in a mere or in a go. You have a roof for your head. Kugamba, we tend not to look at the blessings that we have. You tend to cook with a two to me at a cooking tray with a yen 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 octu octu na was a comotima. So, a monte and nine are tidy contented comotima. Tasola cubera mosanu. Being contented doesn't mean that you don't want a better life. We, you can want a better life. You can work at it. But in the meantime, love it, cherish it. Because people think the grass is greener on the other side. And they, they're very wrong. The grass is only greener where you water it. Water your grass. Even to be jacuted and pola and pola, but you're talking about Kufanga Allah Takumadi de Rizikio. Chicho papa, why are you going crazy just because somebody did everything? I got on a chicola, or they are funny motor cans, a synergy for now. Far better, a couple pressure, you know, far better to do with the far better come on better ways. It is so we need to talk to ourselves to a wood. It is to my auntie, okay, I am doing the wrong thing, I need to do better, you know, could choose some more ABC. So, thank you so much for those additions, and I am actually glad you pointed them out. Uh, Sharifa, the other thing is, uh, uh through the years. Na finding out in the Kissi moving to every single concern, sir. Quay and Bari language and noise. Yeah, so I decided, I decided, it would wait from Taraguangi. I pay myself first. Yeah, yep. I pay myself first. If if I'm if I, 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 I'm, I'm paid on a weekly basis, yeah, we've answered to me in Funa, Saraguangi, and in Angus, that came at Dinagala, Venga to Zangazinagala. Before I do anything, before any yeah. bills, I pay myself yeah. first. Then uh then you can um uh every other video cabija. Um and sometimes over the over any wakum nakuzola gao. I'm going to just I'm just I'm 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 Alhamdulillah, at least go manye chiku sanyu sa. Na ya mtu watamanyi chimu sanyu sa yu ya chasi nzokuwa so miserable. Tamanyi chicha ya gala, tamanyi chimu sanyu. So lusi ni wabachi manyi, ngawe na gambi, hati okwe spending it ako. So go over the idea that pay yourself first. 
gamba nti buli mwezi ngena ku saving emitwalo 5 ku chenkola ngende ko ku beach you know and at the end of the month tichina chichi genda kuja ko it's actually doing you good okomo yo wakangu ndi musanyufu omusaje ne ne yewunya banaye omukazi yabudwa nonga munyibu na yako miyewo ta smile ko ekali ninga chintu chitono nyo chibade cha mitwalo 10 cha chikuziza mu mbera Honestly, we, we cannot be mean about certain things. Something that makes us glow. Do it. Just do it. Life is too short. So we can pick up this. This is a very nice one. Pay yourself first. When you are going to go to the house, you can go to the house. 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 You know, it doesn't have to be expensive to live a good life. It doesn't really have to. You know, it doesn't have to. So unless there is any other question. Wherever they know, aren't you saying? Put a young mutualo, a gamba pazadi can devi janjalo, kilo ya mkumi nyamu bitano. Sike na gula chenyanja na yenga mazimi ya zimukaga tachiria, ache gomba. Asha kwa wanti kuweba na okusha niko kuhitinga banabwe. You are just choosing not to. But then get less attention to this. They're very small things, but they actually build up. Somebody is actually really bitter. It's something so small. Please take care of yourselves. Heal. Heal. Let us become better people. It is going to help us be better mothers, better sisters, better, ma better wives, better husbands, better fathers. Just to look inwards. Omanyenti mbutufu ni noko chuu samu wana. Haiti aliti sebu fumbo wafte, because I'm focusing mostly on relationships. Nga chintuecho. Okubangu wa mutima gumu likuliko. Ne ukawa kadot ka black ka munoga no kakulachi, ukalongosa. It just keeps growing, just keeps growing. Ne if you go back and you honestly try to find out where this person gets the anger, the bitterness and the resentment. Kawa kantu katini nye wekati. Just heal, heal yourself. Na hichi nishumwechi kusanyu sa, do that. If it's Zumba, Gendozine, if it's gym, do that. If it's swimming, funa wawugira, wakuma kudia ice cream, udia ice cream. Anything that makes you happy, please do that. It is going to improve all the other relationships in your life. Trust me. That is where to start from. And Sister Sharifa, I've noticed one thing. Yes, uh, please. Kuzum, you've been smiling up to now, yeah? Even when Amina was... <laughs> I mean, I was, I mean, during Amina's presentation, we were smiling. The Amina's was smiling. Uh, so I want you to advise some people. Some people never smile. Yet smile is charity. A smile I know. Is yeah. I know. Uh, so advise us about smiling. You know, you, you. How, what, they have a gloomy face all day, all, every day. Yeah. So uh, what should people do to, 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 to have a smile like yours every time? Honestly speaking, I put my energy in the now on the blessings that I have right now. Sagala nyok to know dida biestan nafuna. Sagala nyok to know dida via munange. I'm alive. Alhamdulillah. What do I have in Mudua dido Avarani dido Gulam? I have food. Banji Benda Babatadina. I am, I have clothes. Banja Batadina. My family is healthy. Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm right here. I mean, what is not to be happy about? Eh? We, we, we like to focus on things that actually depress us. Eh? Why? Allah jakumpa rizki yangenge chisera chitu huse. I think the what people need to realize is that batu gamba mudini teri agenda kufa. That makes me content. It gives me peace of mind. Because I know for as long as I'm still alive, my risk is coming. It gives me peace. You're going to hate on everybody. I am a double you will hate on them. Next year, now what I need to come back with the children, my niya buy a kativa zisera a hundred k. But to come back with the bamba la buy. Because no way around go. We come back buy. I'm not going to take a dent. It's next month. Never go back around. You don't appreciate what you have. You will never be happy. So that, that's what makes me happy. I appreciate everything I have. I have a family that loves me. I have good friends. I have. I've actually learned to only keep 
positive people, positive surroundings around me. A change to nature negative, I do not tolerate it. A negative friend, a bad friend, a bad environment, a negative environment, I do not tolerate. Anything that doesn't build me, anything that doesn't evolve me, I am not involved. So no jagana, bad vibes. No bad vibes, yes, right. So, Jagana Nyuba Omosanyafu, because Alhamdulillah, I'm alive. I'm trying to know I'm seeing Gaban, Jesus, Chin Sanyusa. I think that's what everyone should. Sharifa, and those are you, chat. People are saying your smile is contagious. Your smile is good. Your smile. I love this. Your smile is infectious. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. My, my, my sister my said you have beautiful teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm not going to stop smiling. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Mashallah. Zahra, Zahra, you had your hand up. Zahra, you had your hand up and you put it down. Uh, I think. If anyone has a question for Sharifa, please, you can please. put your hand up. Um, uh, no, Umutahan had, had her hand up. Umutahan. Uh, thank you, Sharifa, for that beautiful presentation. It's been really good. Uh, I think people are um, buffing him. Um, what shall you one presenter? Yes, one more presenter. Uh, the next presenter is going to be Mariam Nalumansi. She's our business coach, and she's going to be talking about the business of self-love. Sharifa can stop um, sharing her screen. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope you are all having a good afternoon because I am, mashallah. Um, first of all, thank you, Uma Connected, for allowing to host us. Wallahi, I don't know how this thing escalated to here because our aims just earlier this week were very different. But again, we'll dig into, we'll dive into that further into the presentation. And yeah, so my name is Mariam Nalumansi. I am an architecture technologist by profession, seven years, alhamdulillah. I am a multi-passionate entrepreneur by birth because if you know me, you know I have done some sort of business all through my life. I have been selling something at every point in my life. I am a business coach by purpose because I believe that this is a gift that Allah has blessed me with and it is a trust that I actually have to deliver. And I'm also an author. I have a book that is coming out soon, inshallah. So I start introducing myself like that because you can't love what you don't know, right? And I do it so unapologetically. A few years ago, if you had asked, a few years, a few months ago, if you had asked me, I'd probably just have said one thing because I would have been a bit scared to say everything. You know, but I've learned that, that is, that's why I am, you know, you either take it all or leave it all. So you have to know who you are before you truly love yourself. What's your weakness? What's your strength? What do you like? What do you not like? What annoys you? What makes you happy? You know, what do you look for in people? You, um, do you like to smile all the time like Sharifa? <laughs> Mashallah. You know, what, what do you like? Who are you? the only that you'll be able to truly love yourself. So, um, sorry, I'm going to go through this a bit quick because of time, we are extremely late. So yes, so self-love and money. A lot of people have been seeing the flyer and asking me, okay, so you do business coaching, we know you're always talking about money. What has that got to do with loving myself? But I'll start with the most shallow, most obvious answer. Guys, money makes us happy. Whether you want to admit it or not, money makes us happy. And I know that Ummah, we are very, we hold back a lot when it comes to the money talk, but you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a trader, Khadija Radiallahu Anha was a very rich woman. So it's okay for me to like money and still be a good Muslim at the same time. Then again, self-love and money. Um, 
it's not nice being broke. There are so many things that you can't achieve. There, you can't feel fulfilled for some things. Like I know people who are very generous and for them that's how they show love to themselves and to those people around them. If you're not doing so well, you know, that's a bit, that can be a bit shaky. Then also self-love and money, how you earn it, how you spend it, that's all relating, you know, yourself to the money. And there's all things, for example, you'll go out to, you're a customer care representative, you go out to work, or whatever work you do requires that you actually be out in public, stuff like that. But over the car, you're stressed, you're angry at the world, or to say, the first customer is going to get a lashing, the second client is going to get a lashing, further down the road, you might actually lose your job or your business getting all the negative reviews and stuff like that. So there are three main things that cause resistance um, that hinder our progress on this whole finding ourselves, finding our purpose, making our passion. Like There are three things that usually cause that resistance. So clarity. You get into a car and you don't know where you're going. They know to that you know, I'll I'll get there. So not knowing what you actually want to achieve is what causes the greatest resistance. You, yeah, like you don't know, so you can't move. And that can also get extremely annoying and frustrating further down the journey. Then competence. So you know what you want to do. But you don't know how to do it. And unfortunately, we're in an era where people are very scared to ask. People give off the impression that they know everything. So again, someone will die with their problem and with their not knowing and then drop that thing and move on to the next thing with all the frustrations, just because they didn't go out to actually try to better themselves in that regard. And then confidence. Confidence is like the, the meat <laughs> of this whole thing because that's where we suffer the self-doubt, the fear, we fear to fail, but we also fear to succeed. Because as Sharifa was saying, if I get myself something nice, so I won't even aim that high because I want to be at the same mediocre level like everyone around me. Imposter syndrome, negative talk, and negative self-beliefs. Again, if you're your queen, your mother, all fall in there. So we'll start with clarity. As I said, lack of clarity is very draining. Um, it leads to frustration, scattered priorities, you're exhausted all the time because you're working hard, but you don't know what you're working hard for. Um, low self-esteem and failure. Now I say failure because there is no such thing as failure. Again, as Sharifa said, um, when, you don't so, when you don't do so well at something, you shouldn't look at it of I failed, I'm a failure, I can't achieve anything in my life. It should be one of those situations of, okay, but you always have to ask yourself, what is the next right move? How do I get on from here? Okay, Chigani, but how do I get on from here? So that was a side note. And yeah, so being clear, there is this book by a lady called Bronnie Ware. She was working at a hospice with people who were dying. And she used to hear the same five regrets that people used to tell her the dying people used to tell her. And the most common wish was, I wish I had the courage to live the life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Now, again, we have to write, find the right balance between ourselves and the outside expectations. Because this is, this is from a dying person. They can't do anything about this anymore, right? So they went and studied accounting, they have worked in a bank all their life, but really they wanted to be a farmer. They would have been happy there, and but they've spent the past 20 years of their lives trying to climb up this corporate ladder that they're not really interested in. They hate their boss, they hate the job. Their marriages get messed up because again, they're not getting the satisfaction, the fulfillment they want from the job they're doing. And, and then you die, <laughs> and then what? The people who you are dying so much 
to impress are not, they're not with you there and your life has been wasted away. So again, um, do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. But you have, again, you have to be clear on what you want. Then purpose, our divine dreams and yearnings come from a divine source. As we move towards our dreams, you're moving towards our divinity. Every single one of us has a gift, no doubt. We may just not know it, but we each have a gift. We each have a purpose. Of course, the grander purpose, Allah created us on this earth to worship him. But that is not all he created us for. You know, there's a reason why they say after Juma, after you leave the mosques, go back to the markets and look for your risk. Like, you know, go and hustle, go do something with yourself. So each one of us has a gift and it's our trust to make sure that we act upon that gift. You're stealing from people. If you're a good doctor, yeah, if you're good at like biology or whatever and all that science stuff, and you decide you're not going to be a doctor just because. Like that's, that's not right. You have to explain that. So everyone has something that they're really good at. Everyone has a purpose beyond, you know, most times what we accept. Um, again, societal expectations. As I said, you went, you did accounting, but for you want to be a farmer, people need the farmers. We need to get our food from somewhere. So if everyone went and sat in the bank, who would feed us, right? So yeah, sometimes it's not very obvious. Sometimes we just don't want to admit it to ourselves because we might feel embarrassed about it or something like that. Um, so for in my consultation sessions, what we do to get to that thing, we do a number of visualization exercises where we tap into your subconscious, where the things you really, really want are, and we bring them um, we bring them out and we work on building a business for you out of those things. Then we also do vision boards where you get your goals for there and you pin them up like visuals, the actual picture of I want a red Benz 2012. I don't know. I don't know the Benz models, but I want a red Benz 2012 and you have it right there. So every morning you look at that. The rest of the day, you're actually going to be thinking about it, not intentionally, but it will still be there. And then all of a sudden you'll start seeing red benzes everywhere, that exact model. That's how the mind works. And then there's also the dream jars. This is where you write and put all your dreams and goals for the year in a jar. So again, every morning you open it up, you pull out a piece of paper and it reminds you, I want to make a million dollars at the end of this year. And you actually read it out loud. Now, just by you reading this out loud means that your intentions throughout the day are going to be focused around that. Not intentionally, but again, your subconscious is going to be reacting to that statement that you read in the morning. And then of course, journaling, which is one of my favorite. It's um, only a dream until you write it down. And as Ugand I won't generalize, but I know about the Ugandans I've dealt with. We are not very good at reading. We're not very good at writing. But you guys, if we just sit down and talk about ideas, we actually will not be able to progress them onto the next thing. And this is your dream that you're killing. This is the thing you love that you're killing. So you're not doing anyone else apart from yourself at this service. Then of course, there are other things. Um, as the brother before was saying, when you tap into the Sunnah, you know, when you want to do something, do istihara about it, you know, um, make sure it's halal and it's going to make Allah happy because nothing will make you happy. Nothing will truly fulfill you when it doesn't have the blessing of Allah. That is just, that just won't happen. Um, so again, after you do all those things, there's a reticular activating system. And this is the part of our brain that filters what to pay attention to. So, when you're clear on what you want, the universe tends to work along with you because again, you know, you'll be in flow with the system. But also when you're very disorganized and you're thinking all these negative thoughts about yourself and about other people and about the whole world and the environment, you will still get your reticular activating system will still tap into all those negative things regardless. Like you'll see if you want to think that someone is a thief, 
oja kumukwatanga akuba because even the smallest thing they will do will seem as if bari mukuba so yeah if you look for the bad you will definitely see it so it works both ways then competence ikra that was the first order that was given to our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam read you don't know something read ask those who are better than you get on courses there's so many free courses everywhere now um get on youtube get on pinterest get good books whichever method works for you just get on it but most importantly you should be ready to unlearn unlearning is greater than just business wise it's better than it's greater than so many things like now when we are listening to amina amina's talk right um and they tell you don't eat rice and you really don't eat rice but you're going to collapse if you don't eat rice because your body doesn't conform to that so you have to be ready to unlearn and appreciate that okay so maybe my body is not you know that and you move away from that and that's the only way that you make progress um yeah you just do everything slowly but steadily as long as you're moving and the other thing is every time i tell people this they're like wow this is sobra sia sora ku de kusomero you know i can't i can't do this i can't do that but really i can't is just you saying that i don't want to because to rebound or echi togera chire match chichi ayo gera you know so if you don't if you say you can't then you really just don't want to. and then the second thing is progress not perfection now we spend so much time again um sharifa talked about this we spend so much time wanting to be perfect wanting to give off a perfect picture but we'll never be perfect we'll just keep beating ourselves up about that and we'll waste a lot of time and procrastinate and then it's a cycle i'm not good enough because i tried and i didn't make it and i'm not good enough i tried it wasn't perfect i failed i fell short i didn't and it's just a continuous cycle so you beat yourself up you feel bad about it and then you label yourself failure because you're setting yourself very unrealistic goals things that you can't achieve um then smart goals again when we had to do anything because the more we don't see progress the more we don't think we're achieving the more we want to do anything right so setting smart goals is breaking down your goals into smaller things into smaller more achievable goals and yes again that goes a very long way then confidence i apologize i'm going really fast but time um when we get to confidence the first thing we have to work on is our belief whether you think you can or you think you can you're right as in it's okay it's not by force because that is you are farming this into your life for kids and the sister of order tell you again akukaka because that's what's in your head and everything you do will be about that but that's all the negative self talk and you're just weighing yourself down because at the end of the day we don't believe we don't become what we want we become what we believe we can that's just um so one of the ways of changing our beliefs is by using a belief table so how the belief table works is just like any other table it has four legs and the table top so the table top is your belief of i can lose weight or i can't lose weight and then the legs are the reasons why you actually can't lose this weight you know that's when you look at it from the negative side i can't lose this weight because i'm lazy that's a very weak leg you can break it off any time because you can easily change that belief so for you to actually change your beliefs entirely you do a belief table and on top you put the opposite of your negative belief and you put i can actually lose weight so your first idea would be okay i actually have time to make healthy meals chances are that that is not going to change in the near future if you have time yesterday you have time today you have time tomorrow so that means you can actually make out the time to cook these healthy meals and you just keep on building you just keep on building those ideas until you have all your four legs and your belief is sturdy enough and it's strong and nothing can shake it so even if maryam came and told you where you're fat you cannot lose any weight you're like i know i actually can and i have my reasons why so you keep referring back to this belief table and it will keep you strong in your beliefs and that will help you propel yourself to unimaginable heights and then there is the imposter syndrome that fraud feeling of 
nzani nzani akore cyo you know nze nze ni nze maya muwabwe cyo nchikora ntia you know how i can't achieve that i can't achieve that like who am i yeah even amazing people like maya angelou had the imposter syndrome but look at where that got her all these amazing things that she managed to fulfill through her lifetime because you just have to go past it you have to so on this journey you have to fight yourself to keep reminding yourself about just how amazing you are and basically fake fake it till you make it if you must just fake it till you make it and you learn along the way um so again the negative self talk the self doubt and the imposter syndrome um i have a thing and someone here will be very excited about this i always tell people i'm not good at communication like me i'm not good at communication i'll blue tick you because i'm not good at communication but i took this to ridiculous levels of our tech years without talking to people to people because i expect them to understand i'm not good at communication and i labeled myself that now in this exercise you just have to put the word yet and it will change your entire perspective so i am not good at communication yet meaning that you still have you still have space to grow you still have space to make yourself better by putting that yet you're doubting your doubts you're disorganizing your doubts you know you yeah so you're giving yourself space and you're allowing yourself growth um on top of your negative thoughts and um protect your energy positive vibes only <laughs> rest and self care are so important when you take time to replenish your spirit it allows you to serve others from the overflow you cannot serve from an empty vessel and again they've talked about that you cannot serve from an empty vessel you can't be helping everyone else without helping yourself so you have to invest in things like meaningful relationships and a great support system like um Alhamdulillah this morning I was in a bit of a panic about all of this and my amazing husband helped me sort the kids so that's allowing me to grow that's allowing me to appreciate myself at the end of this talk because I'll be happy that I achieved something for me but I achieved it because of the great support system that I had following up to this talk and then the power of no you don't have to say yes to everything you don't have to, you don't have to say yes to everything and that is a very bad habit that especially women we have you're not comfortable with something it's okay not today why just i just want to stay home and do nothing no one will die in those 24 hours because you did nothing you know your children won't starve not like nothing will happen so it is okay to say no and taking a break taking a break this um yes there are so many workaholics but you have to take a break every day and you have to schedule it because that's the only way you will stick to it so like from 10 o'clock to 1 well not 1 o'clock but like from 10 to 10:30 i'm taking a break regardless of what i'm doing i'll put my pen down stand up and go and work on my mental state and then i'll come back feeling much more refreshed and then i'll get back to what i do some people choose to take this in form of vacations every year and again i'm pumle kone family yange i don't really care in that one month that the business let's see if the business will die so yes and boundaries again i talked about boundaries boundaries in everything we do even when you're dealing with business partners when you're dealing with employees and employers i'll give an example i where i work i work in a public office but from the day step there they know you know i break off for work friday at a certain time i have to be out so a meeting is set at that time i don't show up like yeah it's mariam is you know it's friday it's juma time so leave that but you set that boundary at the beginning well you can still try and set it now but you just make sure that you always have your boundaries in place because at the end of the day you matter the most and then overwhelm don't try to do everything learn how to delegate you're not sigwe katonda you know you're not as we said you're not perfect so don't try don't try so hard to be perfect give yourself a chance and well done we don't really appreciate ourselves we have to wait for that outside you know the next person to come and tell you hey you've done more for yourself you've done more for yourself 
but we really have to be our number one cheerleader. We have to be our number one cheerleader. Like, you know, you finish sending that email and you're like, eh, mashallah, man. Before anyone else, before anyone else, you have to learn how to appreciate yourself. And then you also have to celebrate your small wins. So that takes us back to the smart goals. Where you set small goals, you get your bigger goal and you break it down into smaller parts and you make sure you celebrate every single little win that you actually get, just not with food, which is what I've been doing. But as we've learned today from Amina, avoid the food. And then the hype file. So this is when you get your achievements and you, like now, Sharifa would have to screenshot today's chat and put it in the file. You know, if we're telling you your teeth are nice, you're smiling really good, you've done so well, and you actually keep that. For those days when you feel like you're not good enough, for those days when you feel like our hands are sick, you just go and open up and you're like, hey, right, mashallah, I'm actually a really amazing person. So the hype file. And then also congratulating others. Be happy for other people. When I went to Jemu, to Jemu Miti be happy for them. It doesn't take anything away from you. And being happy for the next person keeps you happy. So yes, congratulate others. So as we are ending, uh, let go and let God. You can only control two things, your work ethic and your attitude about anything. So do the best that you can, push yourself, and every single day, make dua and leave it to Allah as long as you've tied your camel. Not, let me just go and pray Allah because you know, tie your camel and then obedekele Allah to take care of the rest. And then gratitude, be grateful. I have a gratitude journal that I made and every day you just write down, yeah, Allah, thank you for, never come katini katia, you know, a taxi guy gave me space when I wanted to get into the road. Write it because life is all bad when we don't take, when we lose sight of these, of the good things that actually come our way. So it's those things that at the end of the day, you'll find yourself with a list of like 10, 20 things. Alhamdulillah, whatever it is, just be grateful uh, for everything. And then charity, whatever you long for, give it to others. That is everywhere in the Quran, that is everywhere in life. You want something good, give it on to the next person. And this happens even when you look at it from a business perspective. If you want clientele from me, I beg, can you please forward some people my end as well? Because whoever does that is the one who I'm going to remember when people come to me needing their services. And then be kind to yourself. There's no such thing as failure. When you do not do as expected, this is what I talked about in the beginning. Um, just pick yourself up and ask, you know, what's the next right move and move on. Temura you know, how we can do it better. And be patient with the process and with yourself, because none of this stuff is easy. Like um, building a business, having a good relationship, eating right. None of that is easy, but you have to be patient with yourself and trust that everything is a process. If it comes easy, there's something wrong. If you get abs in two days because you're taking pills, um, I, there's definitely something wrong with that. So be patient with the process and with yourself as well. Um, and you're your most important asset, as in it is not worth, there's some people I keep telling this, and anyway, I'll just keep saying it, nothing is worth you. Like it's, you are your most important asset. It's not that job because you'll stress out so much about a job, you'll die in two days. You'll die on a Friday by Monday, there's a replacement on your seat. <laughs> the company hasn't stopped, nothing, nothing, the system hasn't broken. You'll just be replaced, mm. you know? So don't, don't kill yourself for anything. And you owe it to yourself to show up. You owe it to yourself to do the best that you can in every single thing that you do. Because again, Islam tells us, you know, Ehsan, be the best in every single thing that you do. Just try and push yourself to be the best. And yeah, that's it. Sorry, I've gone through it very quickly, but yes, uh, my name is Mariam Nalumansi again. I'm a business coach and I help people turn their passions, the things that they really, really love to do 
into profitable businesses. So boy na echo ya ga na ngato manye nchiko zemu nte sente nonya. Yeah, salam alaikum. Thank you very much, Mariam, for that presentation. Do we have any questions for Mariam? Yes, there's a hand by um, Umtahan. Um, so, Mariam, yeah, my question to you when you mentioned about your working day and then taking a break, like a mental break. Um, Tahan, you need to get you're not very clear. You get closer oh, to your... Hello? Yes, you hear me? Yes, Sorry, yes better now. Alaikum. Wa alaikum. Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And my question to Mariam is, you mentioned about um, having a mental break during the day. What sort of activities do you do to sort of um, give yourself that break? Um, just, just keep it basic. Don't overthink it. Put down your pen, stand up, walk about, come back, you know? You can, or when you're doing a really long task, just set a timer and you're like, every 30 minutes, I will stop for two minutes. So you don't overthink it because the more complicated you make the processes, we, the more we'll procrastinate about it. You just won't do it. Okay. Thank you. Anybody here? Omlalo Muntu, you a question? Put your hand up. I see a question, but she keeps going. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who the name is in Arabic with a cartoon. Hijabi. Yeah, that is. No, I asked, I asked my question. I mean, it's oh, me. you did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cartoon with a hijabi. <laughs> Okay, so can I close up the, our presentation? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for everybody who participated in this talk. Um, we have left the, the link for the sign up sheet. We have a sheet, a worksheet for this presentation. We've left the link in the comments where you can sign up your email and we will send you it. So just a summary of what we've said, a few questions to help move forward with what we've said. Everything that we have discussed today is easier said than done. We are all professionals who are used to working with people and you can tell them all these things, but to actually put them into practice requires a lot, a lot of self-discipline, self-awareness, and of course, self-love. And hopefully today will be the first step for you guys to get into that direction. And hopefully we can share more information with you and even us, we are the the professionals in what we were talking about, but even still us, we also require each other's helps and each other's assistance because nobody is an expert in life. That's just, I, I'm a nutritionist, but I don't know everything about nutrition. Mariam is a business coach. We just know everything about business coach. We all need help because if, if everything was so easy, we would, we would have already achieved it already by ourselves, but we all need help. We need help. We, everyone on this chat needs help. We all need help and we shouldn't be afraid to ask for it. So thank you very much for the patience of, for listening to us. And if you have any feedback, please share it with us. You can share it on the chat. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you, Uncle Zahidi and Uncle Osama. Barakallah fikum. And hopefully we'll see you soon. That's it. Thank you, our daughters. Uh, thank you for the presentations. Um, hopefully we can have this as often as probably once a month. Um, so get yourselves working. It is not a one-off. So <laughs> we've given you another three weeks. So in, in a month's time, we expect you to be back. Inshallah. Inshallah. OK, thank Inshallah. you so much, girls. Barakallah. There are no questions. Um, We'll end the session and then people can take a break, have your prayers, and then you can join Jay Second Day in the next hour or so, uh, or two hours um, for the Sunday session on uh, UMC. Have a good weekend, everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, for those ardent members of Uma Connected, we're going to start Zooming starting from this weekend. 
we'll be zooming. Um, we are partnering with Salam TV. So every Sunday morning, in the wee hours of the morning, 6 a.m. UK time, 9 a.m. Uganda time, we'll be broadcasting live with Salam TV. It started today, and inshallah, it is going to continue every, every weekend going forward. It's a going concern, so we don't expect it to end soon. And then once in a while, we'll have our daughters coming in. We had to have this on Salam TV today, but we thought, oh, there's a question, and this is somebody from Salam TV. Girls, don't, you have to answer this. Kalisa, come in. Unmute yourself, sir. Lisa, you have the mic. Unmute yourself, sir. Is it okay? Yes, it is. Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, uh, just an appreciation. Hello? Uh, to, to the presenter. I've been following. Okay. And uh, we, we, we talk as a team and we come out uh, for the best, inshallah. Inshallah. So girls coming from Salam TV, um, this is one of our colleagues from Salam TV. If they have appreciated it, they know that you're now going to TV. From Zoom, from, from I think from a notebook, Onto yes, Zoom. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now you <laughs> Mims is the one who said I didn't know what happened like at the beginning of this week, what was going on and now where we so next it was just all covered on that. That's all we can say. <laughs> but uh, okay, yeah. Barakallah Fik. Barakallah. Okay. okay. We'll see you soon. Um bye bye. Unless, um, unless anybody else has a question. No. Um, uh, I'm going to send the link again. Somebody's asking for the link for the sign up. I'm going to send it again.